I'll tell you where. Some place warm. A place where the beer flows like wine. Where beautiful women instinctively flock like the salmon of Capistrano. I'm talking about a little place called Aspen. I don't know, Lloyd. The French are assholes. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. I never listen. I'm gonna listen. I wanna listen to the drums. Hey, guys, remember me? <laughs> hey. Hi, Dan. Hello, Blake. Look at him. Hey, Jake. An official public welcome to you. And to you as because well. Because we've, we've spoken many times Quite before. Yes. So but we'd um, guess that you'd be jet lagged today. Yeah. You look great. You do. Hey, thanks, man. Got a glow. <laughs> guess what they say about eating European food is true. Yeah, I got a lot of questions. You look light. Light? Yeah. Like skinny? Yeah, you just look like spry and fit. Yeah. It's season of the cut. (laughs) (laughs) No one says that. Well, one of the 20-year-old girl that I was hanging out with in the last week, who is my daughter. So, (laughs) Thank you for that important qualifier. None of that monkey business you're thinking of. (laughs) It is France. It is France. Uh, But anyway, she's into working out and... I guess yeah, it makes sense. She like says summer's coming. She says that'll that'll start when she gets back, and she's back. I'm back. Whoa! And look at where we are. Minimum age of consent in France. Go ahead. Fifteen. I guess. Yeah. Actually, I had that queued up to <laughs> say we have a, a studio. <laughs> this but is information he wish he knew. Maybe it works for all. Wow. <laughs> yeah, this is amazing. It's we the have most a beautiful. New- studio I've ever been a in a new life. temporary possibly temporary perhaps long term studio that we're trying on for size it is in an undisclosed location secretly hidden in should we just go Dallas County I thought this was Colorado I thought we finally took our trip no because I'm, I'm here. here oh that's right that wouldn't work <laughs> you know it's not at Blake's house because it's Dan and Blake are here, and we're not allowed to be there. Dan and Jake. Excuse me, Dan and Jake are Yeah, but this is amazing. It's the most amazing studio I've ever seen in my life. Yeah. I mean that. It's very, very impressive. I like the setup. I like the... The accoutrement. 1993 Pro Bowl thing behind you. Yeah, it's like a program of sorts. So what we have here is, uh, besides the big wall of sound... I didn't notice Mm -hmm. Pole Guy behind you. Yeah, there's a picture of Pole Guy. (laughs) We are trying to populate. Autographed. As we have said many times, when someone will send something to the den of inequality, where we usually do the broadcasting, high atop my garage, we will say, you know, hey, this is going to be great in our future new studio. And so I would say, yeah, look, these things uh, that people have sent us are great. Yeah. I got the Sinbad collection of movies and. My Sarah Heppola book uh, back there it looks smart. Lawyer, lawyer Frank pillow. Some, uh, some hats, and of course, <laughs> no one believed in him either. That guy up there. Yeah, Boy, yeah. He signed his deal while you were gone. Boy, a lot happened in the Dan world. Yeah. LeBron's got a podcast now. Oh yeah. Oh really? <laughs> yeah. I didn't see that. Yeah. And Baker signed a deal. I've got uh, the Tony Romo Mavericks jersey. Never forget that his name is actually on the court. <laughs> along so with all I was, the other players. I was helping Video Man very slightly. I just helped him load that into his truck, like some of the uh, decorations here. And um, I kept mine, but I put yours because I you said you'd never wear it. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. If we're going to be on video, I might get back to the shirt bits. Yeah. You know, you and I have been away from the shirt bit game yeah, for some time now. I searched out this on purpose to find some. A Dallas-based top, a Dallas-based fit. Sadly, I've given away most of my bit shirts. You know, I, I just hate because you use it so well. Like, you know exactly when to say it. Like, it'd be funnier if you didn't know. <laughs> yeah. I'm a hip guy. Yeah. yeah. 
You, kids love me. You're giving hip right now. <laughs> Does that work? You're giving jealousy. Oh. <laughs> yeah, uh, no, I, I, I gave away. So the the funny part about giving away your bitch shirts is like somewhere there's like a poor family in Euless. That is the funny thing. And they have a and they have a, uh, yeah, oh. <laughs> and, and they have a uh, uh, Four Seasons landscaping shirt from the time that Rudy Giuliani oh. held yeah. the press conference there. <laughs> They've got that. They've got. They've got. Uh, they've so. got uh, a Nancy Pelosi as the devil T-shirt that I had ordered. George Bush with a Hitler mustache. George Bush. Someone with, is wearing that. Yeah, I delivered all of that to a women's shelter. <laughs> it's like, hey, look, beggars can't be choosers. <laughs> they got a witch hunt shirt. That's awesome, man. Kept the straws though. The, uh, the Trump, Trump straws. straws. The freedom straws. That's right. Boy, man, I was in France, as you know, so I was thinking a lot about freedom fries and just how Dude. stupid that all was. I was so bought in in middle school. There's so many other deals like that, too, just, or from around that time. That you were get... not going to eat fries or call it freedom French fries? I, uh, yeah, I, would told, I told the lunch lady at um, middle school, can I get some freedom fries, please? <laughs> what a dork. We're all dorks in middle school. Like, I want to talk France, like, at length. But I will say, with all the uh, art and museums and the uh, age of all the buildings and all that kind of stuff, if I had Germany knocking on my door with a bunch of tanks and uh, planes with bombs in them, I'd probably surrender to uh, whatever. Just don't. We can't have nightly bombing like you, you're going to do in England or whatever, yeah. right? Or like you're doing. Like, okay, we're done. You're saying so. I'm sure we'll, I surrender. Uh, someone will save us. These I buildings, mean, it's the whole world. These buildings more important than millions of human lives uh, subjected to an ethnic cleansing. Um, if you had to pick which one to preserve. You're not really following what I'm saying. Uh, <laughs> they had to fight back. But I mean. Because they were killing Hundreds of thousands of people a year. What would I have done in the Millions. past week had they not preserved those buildings? Yeah, I guess that's a good question. Gone to a more modern city? It is really weird how old it, everything is, right? Isn't that the first thing you think about whenever you get to England? I mean, I think about that when I'm in New York. And then wind that back hundreds of years of yeah, civilization. Yeah, like when our tallest structure was a teepee. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And they have... <laughs> Yeah, it's it's <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They've had it. They they built a church that and, uh, like seven hundred years ago. That's and you know our our house is falling apart. It was built like in the eighties or maybe early nine. I think late eighties maybe. Yet they've got something built in thirteen twenty four that is yep solid. Yeah, aliens, bro. They don't build it like they used to. Man, that was that was when Europe was great. We want to make America like when Europe was great, not like when in the thirteen hundreds. <laughs> yeah, there were some other problems around yeah, that I would time say, too. Nah, you think the age of consent is low now? <laughs> <laughs> hey, so a um, lot of reviews rolling in on the week I was gone, and it appears that the lawyer roundtables are uh, boffo. People really like it. I don't know if you guys addressed that at all. I listened to the, the, your Monday program when I was on the flight back. You got it here yesterday's. But I didn't hear yesterday with Joe Kemp, although I'm getting a lot of Joe Kemp feedback. Like, Joe Kemp was awesome. Yeah. Um, he was the, he the ripping and running yesterday. The most valuable Kemp, perhaps. He's just throwing quarterbacks uh, under the bus for being gay. <laughs> oh, yeah? And it didn't have to be true. <laughs> okay. Yeah, he was without filter yesterday, <laughs> to put it mildly. Okay. That's what we need. It was really good. We got to... Just quit filtering everything. You know, me, I want to beep all the words. And, um, Just one word. We got to get rid of me. Uh, anyway, and I come back and we got like 300 more subscribers. How about that? People, People wanted to hear about your... Our pain. <laughs> yeah, your time in court. <laughs> yeah. 5828 this morning. Stop don't checking. You, don't you love how obsessed Dan is? What do you mean stop now? checking? That's our life. I know, but it's going to go up. It's well, going to go just, down a little bit. He grew up with you or, not caring about anything. Were you always worried about when, which Monday is ratings day? Which, you know, that's this is ratings yeah, day. Yeah, I know. That's but we point. wouldn't talk about it, though. But then I, 
you never well you sometimes you had a ratings check but <laughs> 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 you you know sometimes you some of, just short <laughs> some of you would <laughs> well i don't want to hear it from you shave off a little money bit of bags <laughs> So on today's program, it appears we have a lot that's not regarding France. Some of it may have to carry over to tomorrow. Yeah. I've been uh, without wife all week. I've had both kids. I didn't know that. You perked up whenever you thought without wife, but if you've got yeah. both, and I've had help, but I... Where is she? Uh, first, Arizona, and then as of late last night, El Paso. Mm-hmm. Conferences with uh, former NFL quarterbacks. <laughs> what? Still good though. She was with, at some event with Cam Newton a couple weeks ago. Oh, that is that's true. right. That is true. She, Cam Newton was there. Apparently, he's we never really in got the, that follow up, did we? No. I mean, I don't know much about it. And I, it was the day he, after he got beat up. Did he have an awesome hat? Yes. That's the dumbest thing you've ever asked. If he was wearing a hat? Yeah, an awesome hat. Okay. I guess he didn't get beat up. He got jumped, but he held his own. He did. He did. But yeah, I uh, I was telling Blake beforehand. I think if you have both kids by yourself, and I, like I said, I've had a lot of help. One night, boy stayed elsewhere. I think if you do that, you deserve like two nights by yourself in a hotel. I mean, you've got me <laughs> nodding and agreeing. Yeah, I'm I'm gonna agree with about whatever you said. You deserve. I think that should just be a common thing in marriages, and it would work both ways. Oh sure. But yeah, I don't think that'll be happening. Yeah, I, I think about Our you a lot. Go pick up Nora today, <clears throat> Dan, because you used to say when you would get home from work, the wife would just hand you the kid because she's been at home with the kid all day. Yeah, because she did not have job. And I was always pro your side, like, what? Well, I've been working too. But yeah, yeah I, I feel like watching the kid is a whole different ball game where you just need to be cleansed. Yes, but but it is like she needs a break on the weekend. My wife. Like, well, and yeah. so, yeah, me. where's my, I That's didn't, true. I work, you know, every day of the week and then I don't get the, you know, now I take care of the kid all day Saturday. So where, where does my break come in? Because no, no, that's not a, that's not taking care of the kid that you're just being a father. You're being a good father. Okay. So what are you doing then? <laughs> no, no, I'm working. I'm, oh, okay. Man, anyway, we have it the worst. I know, man. It's always been this way. So uh, we have today in Twitter. We have the huge with um, a little uh, news and today in history and all that kind of stuff. Apparently the cow, dude. <laughs> all right, I'll save the cowboys. Let me just do a quick ba uh, bout of viewer mail. And then, hey everybody, it's time to answer some of today's. Then we can do cowboys. You want to do that? Sure. Wow, you're agreeable. You're an upbeat guy. I just have no scene control in any of the scenes in my life. When is wife coming back? <laughs> uh, later this afternoon, but not in time to get kid. But in time for a little of this? Oh, no a doubt. Little, uh, oh, yeah. Index finger into the fist? Yeah. In and out? Yeah. The old in and out? The difference is, is that in your scenario, I'm the fist, brother. Mm. Is that what pegging is? <laughs> yeah. What's pegging, Blake? Tell me about Peggy. I think oh, what'd it. you guys do to Pornhub? Well, you know. Unbelievable. Just so I heard about it, and then I had to do some research <laughs> because the do? family went away <laughs> to uh, do some museums I didn't care about. And I researched uh, that it did work, though, in France. In France? Yeah, of course it does. Okay. Your age of consent is 15. Yeah. But it's yeah, got, it's you, on. Yeah, it's on one of their regular channels. But isn't that? <laughs> yeah, you, you <laughs> Pornhub would, yeah. is channel four. Isn't that like don't, going to McDonald's in Europe? Like, don't you want a little local flair? We could search French. Yeah, so <laughs> it directs you to French stuff first. Okay, but that's yeah. like ordering a croissant at McDonald's in France. What? I don't know. I don't know what the comp would be. I hate it. It's like uh, oh, like you're looking for the Pornhub of France. Yeah. Oh, I don't think that exists. I think it's just in French, and they. They probably direct you to French videos. However, I will say... So we control the market. I will say... We're good at porn. Um, it's almost like when you have to switch like uh, <laughs> TV providers, like if you move, and they don't offer the one, like you had AT&T or something forever, and then you move. Yeah. Trying to navigate some of these other sites, I'm like, ah! This is, 
The yeah. controls are all jacked up. I don't like the interface. Oh, wait, that's premium? I don't like, like oh, that. I clicked on the... Yeah. You didn't, yeah, it's a whole different ball game. And I, <laughs> you got to wait longer. I just got to tell you, as I said, my wife has been out of town, so I've been practicing. Yeah. yeah. And four days in, I, I don't have it down yet. So you're trying to find other sites. Well, I mean, I've... Yeah, we've <laughs> been sent several. <laughs> Oh really? Yeah. Joe was recommending a couple. Oh, the other way. <laughs> He's a single guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Is that weird? Uh, yeah. Because I've gotten weird. some recommendations and I do really appreciate them, but then I'm like, oh, is that weird that you just shared your favorite <laughs> porn site with this guy? Anyway, as long as you're not paying for it for your buddy. <laughs> Dear Dan, can you please wish your friend and my brother Jonathan Garner happy 58th birthday from Jeffrey Garner? You know him. You know, Jonathan, the guy who, um, the Tesla tours. Oh, yeah, for sure. Good dude. He moved from DFW many years ago to uh, NoCal. You know where that is? Uh, yeah, Northern California. Thank you. And uh, he started a a wine tour, and he bought a Winnebago, called it the Winnebago. Genius. And gave tours of all the local wineries and kicked ass at it. Ever tell you about the time I uh, I did one of those? Although we may have just driven because they were all pretty close together, but we pulled up to one. And it wasn't the Winnebago, but it was like a bus. And it was full of people probably in their 70s. And this is like midday, so they had clearly hit a few already. I saw a guy fall out of a, a bus. Oh, nice. Like a 70-something-year-old man. Oh, man. Like How's dressed real nice. He just was sloshed already and just ate it did you see your like future one o'clock in the afternoon Were you yeah. like yeah there it is right there it, folks because <laughs> sometimes i'll see old me somewhere like i'll see a guy and it's california or something like oh boy that'd be great if that was me you know i got divorced now i'm just sitting here living by the beach yeah i'm eating fish tacos <laughs> if you know what i mean hell yeah yeah brother <laughs> Anyway, um, so then he got to, I don't know if I've told you this, Blake. I think Jake knows this story, but um, then he had a buddy who worked at a five-star hotel, and he said, man, people are always asking me about a wine tour, but they don't want to go on like a tour in a Winnebago with the uh, people like us. Yeah, the, the common folk. The dregs the of society. Poli. Yeah. Um, and so around this time... Jonathan also had seen that the Tesla was starting to become a thing because he lived in NoCal and that's where you know the first tests were and all that kind of stuff. And so he bought himself a Tesla and he called it the Tesla Tours and he would just do individual or a couple. You want a wine tour? How about this fancy new test? Because his business is doing great, so he could get a Tesla. And uh, his first client. When he showed up at the five-star hotel, hopped into uh, the back of his Tesla with his wife, Brett Favre. Wow. Yeah. And he paid for that tour with money that he defrauded from the welfare program of Mississippi. I was going to ask back. if it was really his wife. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe just a beat reporter. <laughs> As it were. Uh, and then, thank you. From what I understand, he's on fire. He also got the in studio, bro. <laughs> I guess he got in early on Tesla too. So yeah, like before you, they started killing people. Well, those kind know. of people make me mad because they don't hit on one thing; they hit on everything they do. Oh right? yeah, we know a couple. He'd people be rich like on the tours alone, but here he is hitting on Tesla. Yeah, I'm sure he, he hit on like, crypto. Yeah, the yeah. people. A hundred percent. That's what I was going to say. The people we know that have hit on Bitcoin, they haven't uh, just hit on Bitcoin. Right. I know. And you know, conversely, I lose at everything. <laughs> Not just yeah. one thing. I know. I want to hit on one thing. It's like you're buying into Bitcoin now. <sighs> I don't. I cool. I, Sixty-eight thousand. I unsubscribed <laughs> from the update email because I was too mad at myself. I still have a little bit, but not what I had. Dear favorite comedy podcast men. There you go. Uh, I'm writing from my hotmail that currently has eighteen thousand unread emails. It used for it's used for junk. I've had it since my freshman year of college. This came yesterday. Not only is today Business Wednesday, but it's my birthday. I'd love a belated shout-out on Thursday's Epi because I'm currently super annoyed that I'm banned from Boys Lake Weekend at PK with y'all. So we're going... Oh, okay. 
Anyway, this is from Courtney Cox Brown. Oh, yeah. The great. <clears throat> yeah, she's unhappy about our boys' trip. Why? It's her husband? Mm-hmm. Hmm. And apparently no girls allowed. We could probably... <laughs> Well, no I, I wives. I think it's allowed. no wives allowed. Yeah, yeah. No wives. <laughs> she doesn't know. <laughs> there may be some paid women there. Dear Amster Dan, okay, love it. Happy okay. birthday to my brother Gabriel. He's not a day one, but I am number five seventy. I sent the Playboy and Pat Tillman newspaper, which will be here soon. I can promise you that. At some point, that will be here. His leaders are probably Joe Kemp's gay friends. <laughs> yeah, that was brought up. <laughs> and the Texas Tech Gap Kid. See if Jake knows that Kempspin from Adrian. Texas Tech Gap Kid. I guess I don't. Should I Google it? Or Google it, as you would say? Maybe, uh... Oh, yeah, I know this kid. I think he might be a listener. Oh, when they tore down the goalpost? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he's just wearing the, the Gap, a T-shirt from from Gap. It just says Gap. Yeah, and he's like carrying the goalpost. He's like 12 or 13 at the time. Okay. That's awesome. Yeah. And then the, yes, it is true. My brother revealed to Blake yesterday what I've known for some time, which is that um, he primarily hangs out with, with gay people. <laughs> Why is that? I don't know. He's just like, it's more fun to go to the bar with him. And he met a couple of people, men and women. And they're like, hey, we're doing wine night or something. They probably love hanging out with him, too, because he's all hot. Yeah, I think that probably doesn't hurt. Cut. Yeah. They don't want to hang out with me. Or me. I'm all old and flabby. Uh, Anna sends a new dirty joke. I heard this today, and I thought of you. Oh, man. Why do people think of me? I don't know. I mean, she she clearly addressed it to only one of us. What does a baby look like when you put it in the microwave? I I hated this line of humor, and I still do. What? <laughs> I don't know. I'm too busy masturbating. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> and that came from woman who cuts dogs' heads off? I don't know. I'm too busy. Uh, okay. <laughs> Cleaning up. Oh. Uh, hey, King. I thought you were doing that act while she cut the dog's head off. Oh, <laughs> a, lot of, okay. a lot of layers here. <laughs> There's a lot going on here. Uh, hey, King. Uh, listening to the Lawyer Roundtable from Puerto Vallarta right now. Puerto Vallarta. I know it's not appropriate to have fun or vacation right now in light of the situation in Gaza <laughs> and our southern border. Very true. But I felt compelled to investigate the alleged Canadian racism that Jake experienced a few re uh, weeks ago. Bruv, I'm here to tell you he was 100% correct. Anyway, more Blake. Keep doing what you're doing, Playboy. Chase that money from Jonathan. Told you guys. Told you. They're not, they're not as advertised. They are racist? What are you saying? No. Well, it was just more that, like, first of all, 90% of the guests at my hotel were from Canada. Which I had no idea was a, a thing. It's like the most popular winter destination for Canadian uh, and mostly like older people. But they would talk to the wait staff, like talk down to them kind of. Just in a way that I don't. And I don't even hear most people here do. You know, my dad might hit you with an Ola <laughs> <laughs> at a Tex Mex restaurant, but they were just like really kind of pushy and ordering them around. Like, hey, I'm in Mexico, I'm above you. Hmm. Allowed to do this. That's not cool. And their no. heads go up when they talk. It's yeah. really no, annoying. No, no, no. <laughs> I want internet money. Yeah, I think that's just South Park, but I don't know. All right. Anyway, I got a couple real quick. Oh, okay. Um, because she does listen, despite your pleas. Yesterday, this was, from your wife or your mom was my mom's birthday. Oh, okay. Yeah, a nice little dinner at our favorite. Happy birthday, Mom. Chef Gabriel's. What's her name? Medea. Her first name? Patsy. P A T S Y. I just. There's nothing. Doesn't it suck when you meet someone five, six times, but you still can't remember their name? She'll be offended by that. Man. 
You've been to our house multiple times when she was there. I know. And in I the love last her. like year, really. It's not like it was 10 years ago. When I we love her. Met. I love her husband. He's I love her ex-husband. Well. She's probably not happy about that. No, she's cool. <laughs> uh, yeah, so shout out to mom and Medea. Happy birthday, mom. And then the other one I got, which uh, we, we missed. Any word on how she was woken up? or <laughs> You son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> her husband enjoyed that. Yesterday. Or he didn't. We yeah, may- <laughs> might not have. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> I mean, eventually, if you keep going, they will stop listening. That's a good point. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. At some point. We also missed a birthday yesterday uh, on Business Wednesday, the 18th birthday. Go ahead. Okay, just keep going. You're on video. I'm, I'm just... Not... <laughs> it's time to... Uh, I'm getting hot. You know I get hot during the show. Yeah, I know. Yeah, put it on there now. Put it on there. <laughs> <laughs> so I was taking off. I had two shirts on the plane, and I had to have my wife. I'm like, hey, hold this shirt so I could take off my shirt on the plane. Like I had yeah. layered just in case I got too hot. I tried to be prepared. You got a little chilly. Yeah, Ooh. yeah but no, nobody can see you. Uh, the people Everybody across the aisle, the yeah. I'm on a plane with a million people. Yeah, but everyone is facing this way. Do you wear a mask? They're, what do you mean? How, you think I'm behind all the people somehow? I, but if There's you're rows sitting, of people back there, and if I'm you're in sitting in your seat, no, in I'm your shirt, I stood up. That's weird. That part's weird. Yeah, but I'm just it doesn't matter. Seated. I'm gonna get back to this birthday. I wore a mask when getting seated. Okay. And then once the plane got going, that's probably logical. Well, I've bought into that. There's really good air circulation. Yeah, I do remember hearing that early on. And then when you're in that little tube walking in and you're slowly, you know, just shuffling along and <clears throat> well, people are hacking up along. It's interesting because you, I, I remember hearing that about COVID, except the first thing I thought was, how come it seems like when someone farts, it stays in here for 20 <laughs> minutes? Ooh. Like an airplane fart lingers worse than any other <laughs> fart. That's interesting. And like, I'm not saying I've never done it. There's too many people on there for them to know for sure. I know, but I hate <laughs> I hate that game though because if someone else does it, oh yeah, it turns into like a, a like a mystery thriller. Well, then you think everyone think it's it. me. I'm the fat well, guy that, in this but, row. You know, if I smell it, I'm like, there's no way I could find out who did this. But if I do it, I know everyone is staring at me. Did we talk about this a couple weeks ago? Do you guys remember when somebody or yourself would fart in class? Like, you just couldn't, even if you could make it silent, there's only 15 to 20 people in there. Would you do it on purpose, loud? No. Oh. That was you? I don't remember. Uh, maybe. I just remember, like, pretty quickly, <laughs> unlike on the plane, you could zero in on where that fart came from in a small classroom. <laughs> and it was just, like, the most embarrassing thing ever. Girls start giggling. <laughs> I hated that your friend's farts, like, you could identify who it came from. <laughs> like, that's so gross to me, but everyone kind of has a fart smell. Interesting. <laughs> I didn't know that. I would assume it's based on diet, but... Yeah, but... Really, you never had that friend that would fart and you just knew it was his? <laughs> Maybe by sound. But I don't know if by smell. I don't Remember, know. I, I we we went through smell. a fart era in the den. Remember that? Uh, well, we... Did, I Let's, guess, at the hands of you. Oh, well, we're a show. <laughs> I don't know. Did we? He was farting. We had a fart era in the den? Oh, he was farting on mic. Oh, okay, but yeah, but that, I was I was in studio for that. Yeah. Yeah. And he would hike up. This is on the ticket. He would make a grunt. Back in the he days. He would make a grunt ticket, face, yeah. and he would kind of raise his leg up to expose it to me a little bit. It was horrible. Yeah. One of the greatest parts of Ham is he had a no farting rule. Which I respected. You know, who didn't have that rule was uh, Danny. <laughs> <laughs> or whenever I was bored up and Danny was producer, he would just let it go. I'm like, that's disgusting. It is. <laughs> so yesterday, we missed the 18th birthday of one Baron Trump, and now he is allowed to legally vape. Is he like six six? Yeah, six seven. Dude, did you see someone on Twitter? That we know, like a listener, works for a dentist, and I guess they had to extract some teeth from an 18-year-old because of vaping. Oh, no. 
<laughs> yeah, like they vape always in the same spot or like if you're always sucking in on the left side of your mouth or something, it really affect like I don't know how much vaping I'll switch it up. This would take, but well, if you're 18, I mean, you hadn't been at it that long, even if you started early. Well, but it was, yeah, it was a kid. That's it was crazy. a high school kid. So this just gives us an excuse. I bring up uh, that Baron is now legally uh, legally allowed to vape because it is my contention that they banned Juul in certain states and they banned the different flavors because Melania found Baron's vape. I'm totally buying that. And I honestly... Um, when I went to the 7-Eleven near Mar-a-Lago when I was on my Trail of Tears, I bought all the rest of the mint ones they had. The guy was like, They're, these are going to, I can't order these anymore. And I was like, give me all of them. So it was nice to buy you them. Profit where on know, eBay? Where I know Baron was probably having Secret Service go pick him up. So what do they do? So you still vape, right? What's it's just, they've, cha- they've limited the flavors. It just doesn't taste as good? No. No. It almost tastes like nothing. You're just getting a little oral fixation and a nicotine fix. That's really weird. <clears throat> they didn't like you can, and you can still buy like crazy flavors of other brands. Like, but it's just that one company. Yeah, like my local gas station, it's like a whole wall of fruity flavors for these other products. But you don't like that? Nah. It's like a different cigarette brand or something. Yeah, I guess. Or gives chew. Us a, it gives us an excuse though to play the time that uh, Trump had to ban vaping. Because Barron got in trouble and he called a very impromptu, hasty press conference. We have a problem. It's a problem that nobody really thought about. Too- oh, we have a problem that? in our country. It's a new problem. It's a problem that nobody really thought about too much uh, a few years ago. And it's called vaping. Especially <laughs> vaping as it pertains to innocent children. Mm. Innoc- and they're coming Poor home little. and they're saying, Mom, I want to vape. <laughs> and... The parents don't know too much about it, and nobody knows too much about it. Oh, that's awesome. Mom, I want to be. <laughs> that's what they come home and say. <laughs> it's these innocent children. Oh, I just remember watching that press conference being like, what the hell is going on right now? Why, why did he randomly call the media together to talk about vaping? Mom, I want to vape. Like was People it? Don't know too much. Was it just exhausting? I'm trying to remember Trump being president, but it was like is well, it just ready. something every day. Oh yeah, there's just a new thing. Yeah, like he just loves the camera. He's out there every day. He's yeah, and then everybody has to report on everything he says. He's just talking trash. Run again, letting it rip. Get ready, brother. Are you putting money on it? I've had. Very poor luck betting on elections <laughs> over yeah. the past ten years, so it might be time to know when to fold them. So you lost Hillary. Yep. Then you bet on Trump against Biden. Yep. Okay. I've wet the beak on a couple of other smaller races as well that I thought <laughs> might turn Jan out. Jan McDowell. Way. I, you know what? I if I could have, I would have, but I did not. So yeah, happy birthday to Baron Trump and my mom. All right. Um, let's see. Let's do this. Let's do Paris after, like, sports and a break. Okay. Because I do think, I know you have cowboy stuff, and you say that's going to take the bulk of our cowboy time. Maybe. But so much happened, or I guess didn't happen, when I was gone. Like, could Cowboy Free Agency have gone any worse? Um, I guess they could have not signed Eric Kendricks, <laughs> the one player that they brought in from the outside. But uh, outside of that, no. I mean, they were the last team to sign a free agent from the outside. And they signed one. And they lose Tyron. Yeah, and that's... At first, I was kind of trying to give them the benefit of the doubt on that because... You know, we criticize Jerry for holding on to players for too long sometimes. Like, that he just gets too emotionally attached and past their prime, he's willing to keep paying them. But then when I saw the breakdown of the contract... It's very team-friendly, so they only have to pay him if he 
Plays. Plays a lot. Yeah. And if he's playing, he's going to play well. You would have to think so. Like, he's so. never really been is. out there, and he's been a shell of himself. He he's, was awesome last year. And so the only thing I was telling Blake the other day was maybe they were worried that they would have to reshuffle the offensive line multiple times throughout the year if he does miss games. So, yes, if he misses games, you don't have to pay him, but you also have to move Tyler Smith to left tackle. Now you have to find a guard, basically what they've had to do before whenever he was out. When maybe And maybe that was a part of the reason because the contract itself, there's no reason they shouldn't have been in on that. Yeah, didn't last year, though, they didn't move Tyler Smith when he did miss a couple games. Mm, correct. But they, Tyler Smith, they just wanted the continuity of him yeah. Yeah. being locked in at guard, which it just feels like they've put themselves in a really bad position coming up to the draft. Yeah, especially yet, since it's not like they're flush with picks. And also Tyron... That's a that's a very good lesson that if we haven't learned it by now after listening to the lawyer roundtable is the uh, the company, no matter who it is, is not for you in the end. He took a very team friendly deal before mm -hmm. and with the thought of, you know, get rewarded in the, you know, longev you know, all that kind of stuff. Hall of Famer. Yeah, don't you think you he's probably a first back. first ballot? Yeah. A hundred percent. Yeah. I know I was wrong about DeMarcus Ware, but a hundred percent. And he Joe was Thomas. Absolutely the best. That was You're wrong about Joe yes. Thomas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, they're in a bad spot. And you're right. He uh he bent over backwards, no took, pun intended, multiple times for them. Took a good deal. It was a a good deal for the team. A great deal. And then yeah. And then this is how it all ends. And that seems, oh, it's very disappointing. I don't think Pollard's great, but they lose Pollard. And yeah. wait, did I see Bar Saquon went to Philly? Yeah. Holy shit. <laughs> oh, yeah. And they're not in on that? Like, Saquon is, I'd say, in his prime. This isn't like Zeke leaving. He's he's still still good when he's good. Yeah. But, the, you know, it's just injuries. The, the whole point, and I heard you guys say this on Monday, and I I think we said it before. When you say we're going all in, you can't just mean we're not doing a goddamn, <laughs> like nothing. They're not doing anything. No. They're not going all, let alone going all in. Man, that turned into just absolute catnip for Jerry. Like What? He never wanted to use that term. Some, he heard somebody say it, and somebody asked him about it, probably got written in an article. You know he knows everything. Like, yeah, we're all read. in, of course. Yeah, because what else can he say? Like, he's boxed in at that point. Well, you got to say we're always all in. We're always, yeah, but then you know, we're always gonna, turning over every stone and all that, which is complete horse crap. That's what I was going to say, because then if you don't do it, everyone's just going to keep asking you about it. Like, remember that audio I played you from their podcast? Or, excuse me, it was like a... Uh, the podcast that KT and Saad are on. Yeah. Where they were talking about the day that Stephen Jones got a trade offer in the draft room and didn't even yeah, look up the player or call yeah. him back or anything. Like, they're not always scouring everything. They're, it's kind of amazing how good they are. But when you're at this point, don't you have to, forget about Jerry being a million years old. Don't you have to? Because you do have Dak. This is probably, you know, he's as good as he's ever going to be. And if you're dicking around with his contract, yeah, you clearly... Could this be the last year of Dak? Man, I think it's weird it hasn't been done yet. I thought they would do it before free agency. Yeah, you know, to so give them a little could, <laughs> give room. A little breathing room. And uh, It feels like every day that gets more expensive. Like it's not the price ain't going down on Dak. No, I don't think so. And he never bought his people never bought your the pie's only so big and we can only do so much and Yeah, it's uh it's a bad situation. I wonder if it's the last year of Dak. They have no other obviously no other plan. Where'd Pollard go? Uh Tennessee. And what was that deal? Uh you know what I just pulled it up here. Isn't impressive? You, uh three for twenty one. Yeah. You know, like, part of the problem too with their allocation of uh, of money at different positions is I'm pretty sure they still have six million on the cap for Zeke this year. I've heard. So, do you want to talk about? You shut up. 
Have you seen? <laughs> you shut up. And maybe that's just planted by Zeke's people or whatever, but. What's the report? He could be back here. They're not rolling it out. Of course it was planted by Zeke's people. Did you have, would you have to pay him anything? Could you be like, hey, you know, we still have to we, pay We're you. still <laughs> paying you $6 million. Six million from before. What if we just call that? Give you a lunch card. Man. It's bad, dude. There, it's and bad. so, yeah, now you head into the draft. You have to have a running back. So now when. Rico Daddle and Deuce Vaughn. Please, Deuce Vaughn. <laughs> what a joke that was. So, but I like Rico Daddle. Yeah. Yeah. And he was a nice tandem. Yeah. But. Piece of a tandem. Yeah, but. Uh, Deuce Vaughn is not a good piece of a tandem. Okay, let's go down the positions you need in the draft. You need a guard. You need a center. Or left tackle. I'm not sure which one. Yeah. You need whatever Tyler Smith doesn't play. You need a center. You guys want to uh, you need guess. need a running back. You guys want to guess who is currently listed as their starting center on the R Lads depth chart? Brock Hoffman. Who is a person, for sure. Yeah, who's that? He sounds like a fake uh, replacement player in Madden when they don't know the real name. Yeah. What happened to the guy that was, he has a big Kemp spin from college? Oh, Josh Ball? Yeah. He plays uh, tackle. Is he still just see. kind of a nothing? Obviously, he couldn't he, force his way into the... He is currently listed as the backup right guard as last year they started moving him to uh, the inside. Left guard? Starting left guard? Um... He played a little last year. I don't remember his name. T.J. Bass. That's right. Yeah. And he played a little right guard, too, I think. So you Which need sounds like a member two of a boy starting band. offensive linemen. <laughs> two starting offensive linemen. You need a running back. A starting running back, or at least someone that can go in tandem with Dowdle. Like. They let Ma Michael Gallup go. Did you see that? Oh. Oh, yeah, yeah, I did see you that. You had to bring that up? No, I thought that was so... <laughs> that whole Michael Gallup it. thing was such a charade as well, like... Everyone knew they had to – they probably had to release him. Do you remember the first report? Uh, was it Calvin Watkins? Somebody put out, like, something straight from the agent of uh, – that, that that you know, should he be released, interest will be very high. Yeah. <laughs> and is he signed anywhere? He's, I don't he signed with um, – I don't know why Tennessee comes to mind. Maybe that's because of Pollard. But, yeah, he's he got a deal somewhere. No, not yet. Oh really? Yeah. Boy, that Amari Cooper deal. He's what he's a mess. Taking that was. some meetings, so there's a little interest. Okay, there. yeah, interest is there. <laughs> oh yeah, visiting the Ravens. Um, um. Okay, so you probably need a receiver. Every receiver visits the Ravens. Don't forget Jalen <laughs> yeah. Tolbert breakout. Yeah, I don't think he's that bad. But anyway, that that's just on the offense. And what is that? Four positions. Three or four, yeah. Okay, then Hankins just signed a deal somewhere else. So you probably need a defensive tackle. You need more linebacker help. Oh my gosh, yeah. Get that red shirt year off of Overshone. Huh? Yeah, coming off an ACL, you signed Kendricks, but still, I, yeah, that's a you also, lot of holes to fill in the draft. After, <laughs> so after, you're also not guaranteed if you have a, a first and second round, they aren't guaranteed to be day one starters. As we found out last year. Yeah. Yeah. Also, because they don't have a high pick. They did bring back Jordan Lewis because I guess they're comfortable enough with Deron Bland being opposite Diggs, but they lost Gilmore. So when you were able to have like the ability of like, man, we can just throw so many – Solid Gilmore coach. signed somewhere else? Uh, he hasn't signed here. Okay, I know he's he was getting up there anyway, but yeah, but it's, if you could bring him back, I think you would. Uh, considering you're now you kind of have Jordan to. Lewis as your yeah. third corner. Yeah, what a mess. Well, what they're good mess. they'll still make the playoffs. You know, and the, this is what I was—that'd be great. They probably will. And this is what I was telling Blake on Monday. But this year, McCarthy's <laughs> gone if they don't advance to the <laughs> every year. The. Uh, the reason I think that they're doing this is pretty clear. It's that they're going to give max, you know, quote unquote max top of the market deals to all of their stars, and that's what they care about. And it's worked out to Micah somewhat well for them. To Micah, to C D. Like when you see what Calvin Ridley just signed for, it's like it's almost what, it's almost what they wouldn't pay AJ Brown in Tennessee. Yeah. So CD's getting thirty million a year. Micah will be the highest paid defensive player in the league. You already gave a pretty, pretty high dollar deal to Diggs. You know they're, they 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 want the stars, and that'll get you twelve wins. Did we play that audio? I think we did what if they when do you that? were here. But Stephen, again, I mean, hey, we we, we I guess we're terrible. We won twelve games. <laughs> 
Man. Won 12 games, three years in a row. I mean, it's I a good— it terrible. That's a good argument. Yeah, I mean, they have won a lot of games. Yeah. And I think that's the way they like it. I don't know that it really kills them, you know, because as I have a story in the news, uh, Jerry just— it's just so crazy to get press releases about the general manager of the team that you're a fan of, but they're about him putting a hundred million more dollars into an equity fund for an oil shale field, you know, natural gas field. Comstock, Dan, which he is now, uh, after putting in a hundred million dollars, a sixty-seven percent owner of. You played some audio a couple years ago of him being on what MSN? cnbc or something yeah. yeah nbc business it was about comstock right yeah i think so yeah he just sounded so brilliant yeah yet we've heard him blockchain calm and sound <laughs> that's what i had in mind when the proposition of blockchain calm <laughs> blockchain calm named after the very essence <laughs> of what it is Pretty to good. begin with blockchain calm as it turns out Blockchain Com is what one of the founding people of the total concept of blockchain. <laughs> <laughs> it's so true. Energy. You know what I would pay money to see? Like <laughs> right right above my excitement for Paul Brother and Tyson on pay per view would be to put Dez and Jerry in a room and have them both try to explain crypto to each other. <laughs> Let's do that. We can do that with audio. Yeah, because that's not that much better than what Dez went with. I mean, I'm going to write that down, Blake, because you don't write things down for me anymore. <laughs> Excuse Whoa, me. Oh, you all right? Yeah, but still, my point was just he's got so much else going on. You can't convince me that he's like really, really busted up when they win 12 games but don't make it further in the playoffs. Because they still won twelve games when he was still the highest rated team. He was busted up when they were five and eleven three years in a row. That doesn't play because that gets you on at noon, and that that gets you on at noon. That gets you to swallow your pride and hire Parcells. Yeah, but yeah, he was. We should have thought about that. He wasn't about to hire Belichick. No, he's going to break the bank. To his point, nobody else was either. Well, but still. But it seems like if there's a team that's on the cusp and ready to, what's their one thing they can't do? What's Belichick can do help you win the playoffs. I just finished the Belichick book, so I'm kind of stoked on Belichick right now. Right now, yeah. So the other Cowboy story that you missed while you were gone is the Dak story. You looking forward to the Saban Belichick Monday Night Football with the Mannings? Like, are they going to do? He's going to. Yeah. He's, he's, he's signed with Omaha something. Productions. He's going to have a podcast. He's going to do College Game Day or something. I will absolutely watch it. I hope they. I hope they commentate the Tyson fight. <laughs> <laughs> Snoop Dogg, <laughs> throw Snoop in there. <laughs> what was the uh, fight that he did? But he, it was Tyson, wasn't it, or something? We watched. It was. I feel like the Paul brother was a, somehow associated with that, but it was Tyson somebody or and, something. And Snoop was doing. Maybe it was. Ja no, maybe play. it was Jake Paul. Yeah, it could. Be. I don't know. Yeah. Either one. So the yeah, fact that they're together is so great. But uh, a woman now Dad. filed a report over the alleged incident in 2017 where she claims that. Uh, she was sexually assaulted in a parking lot of a strip club. Dak's attorneys filed an extortion lawsuit. And, of course, Dak has denied the allegations. So, it's just another thing. Do you think they got rid of Tyron because he was a witness in Jerry's sexual assault claim? <laughs> the fact that you can even put that sentence together... Is quite funny. He was a witness for Jerry, though, right? Well, they just say he was there. Yeah, uh, he was there in the Tom Landry room. Yeah. With Zeke and Tyrone Crawford or somebody. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, we got an email from a guy who is a lawyer. And I'm not going to read it word for word, but he contends that, and I wouldn't just reject this out of hand, that the Cowboys time these things coming out based on contract negotiations. Like that if there is an incident, he brings up Zeke. Um, another incident might have been with Dez, where the Cowboys, when they are aware of an incident, they will go to that plaintiff and say, hey, here's a bag of money. Here's an NDA. We'll tell you whenever you can sue. And that like the Fris Frisco PD will help them with this. We've seen... We know that situations happen with local police departments where they 
they call in Mike the Cleaner before something gets out, and they take care of it. Is this when the the Dez Walmart video yeah. came out? But it did, then it didn't Which, come out, but it was rumors about it. Yeah. So, yeah, the timing of this has always been fishy. Yeah. You know, and Zeke had a couple of issues that would pop up when it was contract time. Um, and he lists a couple of actual attorneys who are apparently always involved in these things. So, I don't know. I would buy it. It is a soap opera. I mean, you've, you've said before, it is just succession. So, think about... Um, was the guy on Succession's name that had like the really long neck in the last season? Oh yeah, they'd done some insider the guy, trading. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, Kendall goes to him and he's like, Hugo? "Hugo, yeah, Hugo." And he goes to him and is like, "Hey, listen, uh, I'm not going to tell anybody about this, but I now own you." Stuff like that. I could see the. I could absolutely see the Cowboys. Well, I could see a lot of teams doing that. Businesses do it in general, but I definitely could see the Cowboys doing that and timing these things out based on. Based on contract situations. Yeah. Um, and it does seem like a Cowboys thing to do because it doesn't seem to ever work. Like the Zeke thing. Didn't matter. They still. That's true. They still ended up taking it in the shorts on that. Zeke. And that was, you know, if you're Jerry, you might be thinking, man, I, all I did is defend you to the NFL and said you never did anything in college and fought your suspension and blah, blah, blah. That's and, a good point. Now so you're maybe still there's nothing, like yeah, I don't know. Bending me over on this, but they. you also don't know what – does everybody know what everybody's doing within the organization? No. Like is, is Steven on the same page as Jerry? Does Steven know, you know, because how often, you've mentioned this before, that Jerry will kind of swoop in and I'll I'll get this negotiation done. Yeah, with Demarcus Lawrence. That was uh, the most recent one, I recall. Yeah. And Demarcus even said in that in that interview we played, like that he told Steven, kind of cucked him a little bit, was like, why don't you call your dad? Yeah. <laughs> I want to talk to the guy in charge. Even, I, I know he's going to get this done. Even the Randy Gregory thing. Yeah. I think... He and Jerry had a deal, but then once Steven got involved, that's when he began shopping. Yeah, I, I can feel that. Yeah, of course. <laughs> but but piggybacking off of what you said, what what big contract situation have the Cowboys come out on top of? Because they waited on Dak. That didn't work. No. The Zeke thing didn't work. They got in early on Jalen Smith. That didn't work. Yeah, I mean... They, they overpaid Romo early. That didn't work. They, they overpaid Romo later. That they, didn't work. They paid Michael Gallup when he couldn't walk. They paid the Roy Williams, the receiver, too much at the time. and Kind of like the only big win they've had is probably, uh, as you mentioned, DeMarco Murray. Just saying, no, we're not, yeah, we're not interested out. in that. And don't you remember? I remember you saying at the time, like, hey, that this is great. The Cowboys are now one of the teams that do things right in the NFL. Oh, yeah. And I even remember. And then they drafted Zeke. But like even two when it was time later. to pay Zeke, I remember watching uh, the interview of Jerry at training camp and him saying, "Like, you know, you don't have to have a elite running back to be successful." Like he said that during the negotiations, and I was like, "Hell yeah, right? That's let's he's go. got. He gets it now." And then they, and then they <laughs> overpaid they gave him, Zeke, and they're still paying him this year. They gave him say. the most unmovable contract in the history of the sport that vested three years ahead of time every season. And then the big story of the uh, training camp was Zach Martin wanted a new deal. And Jerry said, ah, nope, nope, not going to budge. And then they budge. Yeah, it's all just a bunch of bullshit. But I guess what I'm saying is there's a lot more going on than I think we think there is. <laughs> there has Boy, to be. That'd be great to ever know all the... Oh, my God. But I guess that's like knowing all the government secrets, right? You're never going to? No, I mean... I. <laughs> Obviously, the guy we used to always think, like, what if he wrote a book was was rich? Or Roosevelt. Yeah, or Roosevelt. He would have a different... <laughs> yeah, but Rich, more stories. rich knows. I mean, he's got a cemetery. But, you know, obviously that was never going to happen. I'm certain uh, he was well taken care of, right? Sure. Like, probably continues to be. I would think so. Like, they ended up getting rid of him, but they said, look, it's just because we have to. We We don't want to. I don't think what you did is that bad. <laughs> Taking a few pictures, that's fine. We've all done it. You know, you did mix in one of my daughter. You mix in one of my daughter, but you know what? She's hot. We get it. <laughs> yeah. 
He wouldn't so, be the first powerful man to publicly comment or tell colleagues how hot his daughter is. True. <laughs> there are others. Not too much. <clears throat> well, that's that's good cowboys talk, Dan. That is good cowboys. Let's applaud ourselves. We did a great job there. Um, My one other. Yeah, oh, okay, you got another cowboy thing or no, sports thing? It's just sports thing. Go ahead. Otani. Oh my gosh! Yeah, we may have to just do it tomorrow because it's such a big story, and I want to make sure we get plenty of time for France talk. But I don't know. I listened to John Boy's podcast. Um, oh, really? It's pretty much just him reading the article and being like, "What the f?" <laughs> but uh, I've read you know three or four. So the story comes out that Otani's interpreter was gaming on baseball. Otani had to pay off his debts and all that kind of stuff. Well, there's right? just it's very very murky. We still just don't know. And Otani paid it himself. Yeah. He didn't pay the guy money, and he said it was because... He didn't want him to gamble it away. Yeah, like if I just gave him the money, I thought he'd gamble the money away. But to me... Why am I seeing theft? Well, because... And this is such a complicated story. Maybe we'll have more info on it tomorrow, and that'll be a better conversation. But the crazy part is, the timeline is this. He knew that this story was going to come out because the interpreter, because the illegal bookie in California that he was using was under a federal probe. And so they were about to get hit and he knew that. So he went to the team and to Otani's lawyers and was like, Hey, I'm in some shit here. Um, my, my name is in this. And so is Shohei's because Shohei's names are on the wire transfers when he paid off my debts. So Shohei's lawyers told him, all right, so you had a gambling problem, and Shohei paid it off for you. That's not bad for us. So he went and did a 90-minute interview with ESPN on Tuesday night and told them everything and told them, hey, I have a gambling problem. Shohei knew about it. He felt bad for me. I was there whenever he paid the money because that's where that line of he didn't want to give me the money came from. He told them everything as he saw it. And then – the uh, people at ESPN contacted the attorneys and were like, you know what this guy just told us? Like, he told us that Shohei actually paid these debts personally. And the lawyers then s- said, that guy's a liar. Oh. He recants everything. And the next day, the guy came out and was like, actually, Shohei never knew about any of it. I stole, I, you know, it's theft. Like, he completely walked back a 90-minute interview where he gave a blow-by-blow to reporters. And you have to think, like, Jeff... Passing is just sitting there with his jaw on the floor like, why are you telling me this? And so the lawyers find out how much that guy actually sang and then the next day told ESPN, that guy's a liar. Why would you believe anything he said? It's not lost on me that it's kind of funny that this guy is a translator. (laughs) (laughs) He couldn't get the (laughs) information was somehow completely wrong one way or the other based on a 48-hour period. And so now they're saying he actually stole that money from Shohei and that it's theft. That's why. That's where the theft. But Shohei comes sent up. it. Yeah, like his name's on the way. Yeah, but they're going to try to say that like the guy like hacked his account or logged in or something, you know. But his names are definitely his name is definitely on two five hundred thousand dollar wire transfers. Um, the total was four and a half million. So is the first thing. I want to know if the first thing you thought of, and if it's the same thing as me when I heard this story. Um, I don't, I don't know. It's based on someone once gave advice. Maybe it was an NFL player. To oh, NFL you got to have a fall guy. Got to have a fall guy. <laughs> and this guy is Shohei's fall guy. Yeah, He's maybe. He's going to take all the heat. He's going to say whatever he has to say to keep Shohei out of it. Although he obviously said the things he shouldn't have said in the beginning. Yeah. But that Shohei is involved in this gambling somehow. It's a lot easier and, to have a fall guy just like you had a, 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 a eighth of weed in your car or something and you need him to take the rap for it, then, hey, we've committed some federal financial crimes. But also now this is, see, this is why I want to talk to Haralabob someday soon. Just because gam- there's so much gambling stuff going on now, it's it's very hard to now separate sports from gambling and, like, guys can't be involved in gambling at all. Like, the NFL once suspended people just for, like, promoting a casino. Yeah. And obviously Pete Rose for life, but the best player, 
the most marketable worldwide player in Major League Baseball now? They're, like Major League Baseball wants to help cover this up. Yeah, because if there's any way to do so, they need that the teat of gambling money to keep coming in. They want the teat of gambling money, and they don't want the stain of yeah, like. They're going to be up against, like, we have to ban Shohei Otani from baseball. Well, I, 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 and then he would just go play in Japan. <laughs> for, well, I, I'm excited to see him play at shooting guard for the Texas Legends. <laughs> Explain that. Just Michael Jordan had to leave the NBA. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Bits yeah, and then decided level. to play baseball. Burlington Barons, Texas yeah, Legends. Yeah, so let's just, Got let's it. just come be a two guard. I like okay. it. All right. You know what I just thought of when you were mentioning the promoting casinos thing? Do you remember whenever they made Romo cancel his fantasy football event? That was not yes, that long it was like ago. DraftKings or somebody, right? Yeah, it was one of them. It was at the start of of fantasy football, like big time companies being in, involved in it. And that yeah, that was just fantasy football. And I think it was, but I think it was going to be held in Vegas. And this was like within the last like ten or twelve years. And now it's just you cannot watch a game. Like, half the screen is just gambling ads. Now, the funny thing, uh, last thing I'll say on Otani today, before we get more info, is the guy the, do, the guy did hit the uh, Pete Rose line of, never bet on baseball. Oh, well then. <laughs> I'm a man of character. Yeah, I mean. So you're in the clubhouse every day. You have access to you know lineups. Yeah, yeah, you know things that are going on across the league. Yeah. But you never... But you gambled four million dollars, <laughs> or at least just lost that. Yeah, at least Who just knows lost that. Oh, gambled. that's the other part of it too. Is that um, I don't know if this guy's actually said this on the record or not, but the guy who ran the book said, because people are like, "Why are you letting a translator run up a four and a half million dollar line of credit?" And I think the reporting is that the guy was like, "Well, because the check said Shohei Otani on it." And I was pretty sure that at some point I could collect <laughs> this. I, I have the news. Mm. Because otherwise, like, I don't know what that guy makes. Let's say it's a couple hundred grand. No illegal book is letting you do that. No book ever is letting you do that unless they think you're backed by something much bigger. So the guy definitely knew. And I think there was another part of it where he would uh, tell prospective bettors that they could bet with him and they could know it was safe because Shohei did. Like he was pimp pimping Shohei's involvement as like an advertisement for his book. Because hey, why not? Shohei bets with me. It's a crazy story, dude. It's a crazy, crazy story. Because even if Shohei's a a account is true, or the guy's first account, I, I should say, is true, and Shohei never was gambling and he just paid an illegal book out of his own account, that's still a felony. You can't. You can't do that. It got me to thinking, though, about, like, what if it was, like, a parent? Like, if you if you had a kid who ran up, like, $50,000 in debt to, like, a drug dealer and you paid it, are you... Now, obviously, it's a little different if it's a wire transfer to a book that's more federal, but... Because I definitely have friends. I'll go with friends <laughs> instead of buddy this time who have had their parents clean up Messes for them when they got sideways with something. Really? Yeah. Damn. Like it's, uh, I'm going to the law or I need this money. So I don't know. I don't know what the difference is, but everybody is saying that the fact that he wired the money by itself, big, big crime. Bigly. Anyways. Sports. So, so Good thing the Rangers didn't sign Shohei. <laughs> so avoid him in your fantasy baseball drafts coming up. Blake's going to. Because Blake wants to swoop yeah. in. <laughs> Yeah, that's a good move. All right. The dumbs up, dumbs up, dumbs up, dumbs up. People are asking, why is the fastest growing Apple podcast called The Dumb Zone? Frederick Douglass. Debates. Uh, I don't know what that means. Lincoln Douglass? My, the only one who's I didn't... the most famous series of debates that have ever occurred? I don't, uh, I don't know. Do you know? No. Well, it must not be because of Jake Kemp. After all, he has a master's degree. You've never heard of the Lincoln-Douglas debates? <laughs> Abraham Lincoln and Frederick Doug Douglas debated, like, 
half a dozen times or something. And it was like a healing moment for the nation. Mm. It's thought of as like one of the high points of discourse. And you know what? Whatever. But it turns out that master's degree is from Texas State University. Wait, I'm hundred. I'm a hundred percent wrong. <laughs> Golly. <laughs> Were you gonna, not going to say anything? What is it? So okay. what was it? It's it's Douglas, but it's not Franklin. It's not Franklin. Now, who is the Douglas? Stephen Douglas. Can Jake get out of this hole that he's digging? And Abraham Lincoln There's and no Frederick you know Douglas were, is. like, very close. This is our lowest I do moment. know that. No, it's not. It is. This is the worst moment we've ever yeah, had. Yeah, but you thought... I thought they debated. ...that there are public debates between a white man and a black man Frederick in Douglas, 1850s. Frederick right? Douglass was like a public intellectual. Listen how this smart guy with his fancy degrees tries to change the argument. Okay, so I'm just saying, like, it was not impossible that he could have been in, involved in a debate. He was friends with Abraham Lincoln. Just like Nixon Kennedy or Trump versus Hillary, good friends often publicly debate each other. Am I wrong that Frederick Douglass and Abraham we, we Lincoln were friends? On. Just keep you, going. You have to read the next birthday. The Dumb Zone, recorded live to tape on a podcast near you today. You're listening to The Dumb Zone. No, fuck me. At least I didn't do that to you. You're a good friend, Blake. <laughs> <clears throat> hey, who's your 12-5 upset? <laughs> Is it bracket time? Yeah. Yeah, actually, I was getting hammered by people in France about hey get your bracket in or you got are you going to join my pool like no you've been overseas so you know you're just really disconnected from everything yeah the only sports that i knew about when i was there that i was i was you know following twitter and stuff cuz i like to see if we're trending <laughs> but the only sports that i knew about the only sporting thing i knew about was the madonna statue was being unveiled are we all happy with it? Yeah, it's a cool statue. I okay, <laughs> you didn't miss any didn't miss any Cowboys news. <laughs> there was one thing you missed that I thought was pretty cool that I have a video of. If you want to fire it up, I think this is good news for you as your second team has signed a certain backup quarterback. Jameis is a Cleveland Brown. Oh, really? Yeah. No way. So when they needed him to, uh, they needed someone with a clean record when it comes to <laughs> women to. So when Deshaun Watson mentor Deshaun Watson, wow, that's great. Misses five or six games. <laughs> What'd that of, cost? How did the Cowboys not get that? It wasn't much. It was like seven or eight million or something. No. So yeah, you may see some Jameis next year. Uh, but the Cowboys can't afford it because they have a quarterback who makes a lot. Well, actually, right, well, Dan. Oh, really? You're saying the the team with the quarterback that four, makes the most four million. Wow, that's great. Is there yeah. any doubt? Wow. I, I, I See, I'm missing all this stuff. Like Saquon. I learned Saquon last night. He will have, po- possibly in a potential new studio in Colorado, he will have a, a <laughs> Jameis Browns jersey. All right, here we go. This is Jameis in the Cleveland practice facility. Getting to know his new center. <laughs> Making some line calls. But look at him. He's in his, he's in his suit. <laughs> Little fake carry out of a handoff. <laughs> that, was, that is awesome. That was the day he signed. He's just like, "Hey, where's my center? We got to get this. We got to get this going." That <laughs> is great. Great teammate. He is a great teammate. Told you. Through thirty touchdowns his last year starting. Yeah, and and thirty interceptions and thirty intercepted. The, the classic thirty thirty club. <laughs> the only one ever, right? Yeah, I believe so. <laughs> well, look at it. Just right in the practice facility. He didn't He's even take his coat off. <laughs> the, center, the center finds it hilarious. He, get, <laughs> he gets out to a pass pro stance. He's yeah, so happy was, now. What was my Madonna note? I kept... Uh, that they didn't have three pucks coming off of it. It looked like the anal beads. Like the dirt <laughs> No, just because of the... Uh, I think we... Do you remember I told you my 
Star's buddy, Mark, who has been up in at one of our uh, broadcasts, our Cowboy live streams, I believe. Um, he was the guy who first brought up to me, like, hey, how come if Dirk has a statue, maybe it was around Dirk's statue time, Madonna doesn't have one. I was like, yeah, you're right. And that's when we started kind of talking about it. He's taking credit for the statue. Yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> My friend Mark is taking credit for the statue. He texted me that day. Okay. That's, that's the only right. reason yeah. why I knew. He said, since you and I are responsible for Mike Madonna getting his statue, I'll be there to uh, represent. And, you know, that was like at whatever time. Or maybe I woke up and saw that. So let me have a... Uh, oh, actually... So I want to shout out to um, Jeff Jones. He's the guy who did that fake promo for us. And I produced that fake promo... Flying back, nice from Paris. Tons of time, yeah. A lot of, lot, of, lot of time. What's? I started watching your documentary, your Netflix doc that you told me to watch, mm-hmm. but I haven't finished it. How long's the flight? Oh, uh, I don't know, nine. Yeah, Ugh. about eight or nine. yeah, something like that. Um, get that Wi-Fi. I tried not to think about it. So Wi-Fi coming back, I did get, and I'm pissed because I'm over the ocean and it's not working. Oh. I paid the $30. The full flight. The full, like, streaming one because I wanted to make sure it was working because I was going to get some clips and the streaming wouldn't work. And so it says you can go online and and dispute if your thing doesn't work. So am I going to go dispute it? It seems like a beating. It seems like a beating, so I don't know if I'll do that. Maybe they'll give you some miles. Yeah, I could use some miles, I guess, if I ever go back on Air France. Um, <laughs> but uh, I can't remember what I was going to say. Jeff. Uh, oh, Jeff. Stuff. Yes. Uh, yeah. So, uh, but I also had Rob, our gen- our Rob Schindler, our main production guy, mm-hmm. <laughs> who has done a lot of things. I had him record the same thing. So you'll hear that same promo again with Rob's voice. <laughs> okay. Why not? <laughs> Uh, and he's also the guy that made this for me. Oh, wait. Not that. Not that. What did he make? He made this. Bonjour, you dumb fucks. <laughs> it's time for Tales from Abroad. Here's your host. Me. Travel Dan. So he made that. Okay. And I don't know if I can listen to this for the uh, whole 20-minute bed that he... You're probably pretty for. tired of this song. Yeah, do they just have that playing at all times over there? This was the only... This was the number one song. They did a <laughs> countdown. I think it actually won... Uh, what's that? Song contests? Yeah. Eurovision or something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, this is... Every song parody is done to this. Every... Mm-hmm. Yeah. They, uh, uh, let's see here. Adeo no more. Adeo no more. <laughs> they got a no more parody. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything. <laughs> Anyway, um, uh, I'm going to pause this uh, because (laughs) I don't know if we can hear that for 20 minutes. I know I can't. But so I'll start off with this. Uh, So I had to, I booked on Air France, but it gives you, it's Delta. So Delta flies you from Dallas to Atlanta. Don't ever leave the airport. (laughs) So apparently Atlanta, (laughs) Atlanta is the Delta hub. Yes. Like American is. DFW. DFW. So if you live in Atlanta, you probably have like an, a Delta Advantage credit card. Which, by the way, my American Airlines Advantage credit card was kicking me in the dick for the last 10 days. Because every purchase I made over there, they would dispute it and it had to call me to make sure Usually that it, it only takes me. once. Yeah. Right. Or no, you call beforehand. I did. That, I, I mean, I, I set it up. You're very thorough, so that's surprising. I I, I set it up that it was it would be traveling, uh, talk to somebody, um, and then every time it would say, you know, we have to call to confirm, and then I'd have to type in. So it was just such a beating, such a beating. And I want everybody to know this: they're not protecting you, because some people, my wife will be like, "Oh, that's great," because they don't want you to get scammed by somebody using your credit card. No, if somebody uses my credit card. I am not going to be liable for that. The credit card company is. So the reason they make this so difficult is to protect themselves. Yeah. So they're not uh, out to help you. And you're just trying to buy a hooker. <laughs> I'm just trying to buy a 15-year-old. I mean, come on. <clears throat> Rent, you don't buy. It's legal there, Jake. You don't... Uh... I don't think it is. I thought you said it was. Or that was in 1300 Yeah, I'm sure. Oh, okay. Yeah, but... I didn't take it. I did, he did take go a to a place where, there, where it is legal. 
but not not in France. Uh, okay. <laughs> well, anyway, we'll get to Amsterdam that. Amsterdam is <clears throat> way more highbrow than France when so, it comes to that. So I'm on Delta, and we got <laughs> we got the pilot that does bits. Oh, oh God, God no. no. Should be short lived. I will uh, turn the seatbelt sign off as soon as it's safe to do so. We get to about 35,000 feet. It should be smooth for the duration of the flight. Just do me a favor. Keep an eye on that little picture of the seatbelt over your head and listen to me when I quack about the seatbelts. And please go ahead and honor that. It's for your safety and everybody around you and for my crew in the back. Uh, you wear your seatbelt in a car going 55 miles an hour or 95 oh, if you're moving California oh. like I do. You may as well wear them in the jet going 500 miles an hour. Uh, push back up here shortly. Uh, taxi out to take off to the south. If you're on the he right had already done a couple plane, bits, so then I had to pull out the phone. The airplane's going to see Dallas. And we're over the top of downtown Dallas. I don't know if Wait. directly over the top where you can't see it. But I'll look out the window because it's better than what's in the seat back. Uh, I'd like to thank you for choosing Delta Airlines. We are sincerely grateful for your business and All right. loyalty. From myself, a retired Navy fighter pilot, and the 11,000 veterans. <laughs> he wants you to know that. I'd like to welcome our military personnel. Our military families, thank you for your Always oh, about the military. Again, thanks mm-hmm. for choosing the world's best airline. And, welcome and their families, so you're you're covered there. Sure. Because your brother. I don't think I've ever heard a pilot talk that much. Dude. You know, you'll get chatty uh, flight attendant that wants to kind of be the star of their own movie, but I've never heard a pilot main character that hard. Is, is there a chance he could T-bone another plane up there? Why are we buckling up? <laughs> he... Uh, yeah. So, like I said, he had already done a couple bits. Then I pulled out the phone, uh, but he wasn't yeah, done. Since uh, the final data, we can't uh, push until we have that data. However, uh, not a lot of airplanes out there between us and the runway, so I think we'll be able to make up some time on the taxi, uh, as well as I will fly this airplane like a Ricky Bobby drives a race car and try to get oh, here as uh, quickly and close on time as I can. Of course, safety being the, uh, the priority over timing, but I think we can handle both of those quite easily today. Once we get to top of the climb, I'll have a really good idea as to exactly what time will be at the gate. I don't think that's going to affect anyone's connection, so we should be moving here in just a minute. Thanks for your patience. Okay, yeah, I Ricky want, Bobby. I want him to wreck the plane now. <laughs> to crash the plane. Right, and then I could be possibly the uh, the only survivor. Yeah. That kid coughed the entire time? Uh, so, there was a coughing kid, but that was just the flight to Atlanta. So then when we get okay. to Atlanta... And now we have a uh, a layover of a couple hours, and then we're going to go to Paris. And now you get on an actual Air France. So now I'm on Air France, and I would like to report to you that I got a lot of um, feedback on, because I've been asking everybody, as you guys are probably really tired of, uh, hey, you got any jet lag tips, how to beat, because uh, I was very worried about that. I'm soft. I'm, I'm a guy who is dedicated to his schedule. Right? Oh, I yeah. Get up at the same time, go to bed at the same time, eat the same things, do everything the same every day. And now I'm going to really throw a wrench into that by going to Paris. The time difference, let's see. Is it seven? Is it seven? Uh, so right now it is, as we record live to tape. Six. It's 144 here, yeah, and it's 744 there. Now, this also occurred... You didn't inform me in the news. This so happened to occur. Um, I left the day after daylight savings time. So now I can't figure out. Boy, is this really messed? Like, I'm already messed up for an, uh, from an hour. But I did the Haralabob system, mm-hmm. which is the CIA. That the CIA will tell you to fast for 12 hours, 12 to 16 hours, before you are to land and when you land have a nice meal and then spend the day and we were landing at like 7 a.m paris time so that is what midnight 1 a.m or yeah yeah one yeah so um (coughs) i did that my wife knew i was doing that and she said hey when they come by to uh order meals don't say no to your meal. <laughs> so she had two meals. Sure. <laughs> Respect. <laughs> I think I've been on her end of that before. <laughs> really? Oh, yeah. So and you can order. Now I can order both options. So what yeah. I did when we, I couldn't do it till we got to Atlanta. But once we got to Atlanta, I changed my phone settings so that I just had Paris time. <laughs> so I already knew. Oh, my gosh. It's 
9 p.m. It's 10 p.m. So whatever, even though it was bright outside, I said, oh, my gosh, it's 11. This is when I go to bed. And that's when I just I put on my eye mask and I tried to lay. Now, the good thing is I was in the middle. Um, so there's three seats, an aisle, three seats, an aisle, three seats. Mm-hmm. My wife is on the aisle. I was on the aisle of the middle part, and there was no one in the middle seat. Oh, Whoa. the best. So I had a little room to spread my long legs and try to put legs under there. And Did she ask to sit next to you? Uh, no. She, 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 also, okay. she also had an aisle with yeah. a middle seat open. Oh, okay. okay. So she got lucky, too. Um, so it was very difficult, though, to sleep. Anytime I would fall asleep, it turns out, like, I swear to God, this was not, this was every half hour or so, and it would continue for a half hour, I would hear this. Oh. Oh, no. Right behind me. Extreme crying kids. So, like, I finally got to sleep. It's 1 a.m. in Paris. And and I now finally coughing kids not so bad fell asleep and it, like this kid wakes me up I'm like oh my gosh now I'm awake again and so but but I stayed at least trying to sleep I figured even it you know I've done this before when trying to wake up for the musers fill in show or something like I'm not sleeping but if I just lay here with my eyes closed and totally rest that's at least more sleeping than if I'm up reading or looking at the computer sure. or the phone. So I did that until 7 a.m. And I think now one of Haralabob's things was once you get there, eat, which I did. Uh, and then uh, he says, you know, spend time in the sun, walk around. Well, it was uh, very cold and very rainy mm. all day long. But we had an umbrella and I, I, we just walked around outside. But it was like, boy, this is going to be a miserable week. It turns out only two days were like that. But two days were very miser- miserable and, and freezing. And plus, we our Airbnb wasn't ready, but they let us drop our bags off there. He's got to go kill time in the rain. Yeah. Now, getting through customs once you get to Paris, that took quite some time as well. Um, it was kind of like a Six Flags, like, back and forth line it's a beating. thing. It was, it was a big beating. But- Especially, you know, it's you've just been on a flight for six to eight to ten to twelve hours. And yeah, you now you're, you're standing done. there. That, I've and luckily, my it. wife did save like a yogurt from the breakfast option that they walked around and offered when I was pretending to sleep. And uh, I ate that yogurt in the line. I feel for the, I mean, used to I would get livid, like with most things related to kids, but I, I feel for the, the parents so much in those situations. See, I felt exactly the same way. I'm not mad at them, yeah. where a lot of people are sitting around, probably younger. Yeah, don't without have kids. kids. Yeah, without kids. Would you put them on the plane? Yeah. <laughs> well, you do wonder why you're spending that much money on a baby or whatever, but well, you're not paying. Yeah, well, that that kid was like seven or something, and oh, what a little what? bitch! Yeah, that kid was a beating. Yeah, <laughs> that kid was a thrashing. You would have hated that kid. It sounded like I a baby, and the mom wasn't great either because I didn't record it, but the mom would end up just yelling for a half hour at the kid to stop. Oh, that usually oh, works. Cool. But they were French, and oh, so I couldn't understand anything. Out. It was it was just terrible. <laughs> so. First thing we're there, the first thing I do is we walked into a grocery store to buy a few things. Um, at least, so I stayed in the city. So I can't say this is all of France. And I can't say this is what suburbs would be like. But I was in the city. We were very close to the Eiffel Tower. Hell yeah. And she lives, my daughter is studying in France. And um, air quotes studying. Because I brought my other daughter. Uh, the older daughter, and she's like, uh, this is nothing but a blow-off. She's not doing anything. She's um, giving jealousy. She was giving jealousy. Ooh, I got to read our texts sometime. <laughs> Maybe not all of them. One day I, I I was texting with Jake when I was walking with the girls, and I, I let Ava just text with Jake. Oh, I'm sure that went well. And uh, I should I should look up that thread. Um, but I'll get I'll get to that. I'm trying to go chronological here because the first thing I did, we walked into a grocery store. After we went and found a little place to eat on Rue Claire, turns out Rue Street means street. Yeah, 
And I figured that out pretty early because uh, they got Rue St. Dominique, Rue Claire, but Rue Claire is a pretty cool uh, little street. Uh, the worst place we ate was the first place we ate. And I guess it was, I don't know why. Maybe I didn't really research it. I did some Yelp research after that. But what, what'd um, you get? It sucked. Uh, I don't know. It was like some kind of omelet or something. It was bad. And my younger daughter wasn't with us yet, the one who lives there. So we were like, uh, you know, we said bonjour, but that's <laughs> all we could say. And, you know, they know right away yeah. you're an idiot. And they just, they, they point you to the bad stuff. And, <laughs> you know, and, and it was good to have the younger daughter who had already been there because she's like, don't do this, don't do that. I'm going to tell you one thing that you don't do that's great. The world of not tipping. I knew it. You don't incredible. tip over there? No. You only pretty much only tip over here. Wow. So you just ate your meal and you just, paid for the food and left? You know, you know what it's going to cost when you look at it. Man. Everybody pays the same amount. They say they pay their... Uh, it's a back house, front house equality thing. Well, they say they pay their people a living wage. So they may, you know, their minimum wage is probably whatever, 20 bucks an hour or what, you know, whatever the equivalent would be. Um, but they, they pay you well. They also don't have, and I got this uh, intel going in from the great Justin. Uh, Justin and his wife, Hannah, go to Paris quite often. Hannah is uh, really stoked on Paris, and they were in value. Just the... And a ton of people sent me different stuff, but he talked to us at length. Um, it was very, very helpful. All the uh, I don't know if you got this when you went overseas, but yeah, you, just getting a little intel ahead of time is great. And the listener has always been great about that. Yeah. So I've always had a few, at least, rules of the road. I had one guy say he was actually visiting Paris at the same time, and I shot him my phone number and stuff. He never reached out. And I could see why, because once you're there, there's no time to like, hey, I'm gonna go yeah. hang out with some guy. I, you know, like, I could imagine him trying to tell his wife, I want to go meet this guy. I or you telling his, yours? I listen to his <laughs> podcast. So oh, it's one of our listeners. I got to go uh, yeah. branch off for a while. Um, but at least in this the city uh, grocery stores I was in, nothing in bulk. You know, it isn't like when you see our grocery stores. Um, all of the waters. So if there was a eight pack of water, or whatever twenty pack of water. Uh, they're all open because people will just grab one out of there, which I never see here. No. Um, I can't say that I have. I feel like the portions were smaller. Like, the yogurts were all smaller than our yogurts because I'll eat a yogurt every morning. They had a whole aisle in the grocery store devoted to just biscuits. <laughs> Interesting. Like, they... Uh, <laughs> which... It's such a weird observation. Yeah, like, I just thought... I took a picture of it, like, oh, my gosh... Um, there is no like big protein area. You know how we're stoked on protein here? Yeah. There's got to be workout guys in, in France, but it just didn't seem like when you go into a grocery store here, there's definitely going to be, oh, here's all the protein cereal. Cause I was looking for that. I think a lot of times that's farmed out to the butcher. It, like they have butcher shops that are more common. I know, but not like protein like, based cereal. Oh. You know how there's protein this and protein bars. Oh yeah, protein, that's a very like, American thing. Okay, because yeah. I was looking for that stuff. Because I'll yeah. I'll I'll fire off a protein bar during the day. They didn't have any of that. At least at the grocery stores I was at. At the grocery store I was at, though, at the counter they have Jack Daniels, all the whiskey, vodka, Maker's Mark, all that kind of stuff. Right be right there at the counter. So get your cereal, get your milk, get your tiny yogurt, and get a bottle of Jack Daniels. I mean, that's actually, right that's how it is in a lot of places in America. Is it? Okay. Yeah. It's just not here. That Texas is a bit Yeah. I mean, like, think about, about whenever we'd go to camp. Now that, like, Vaughn's had, like, a, a full liquor beer situation, wine situation. It's common. It's just not common in Texas. So these buildings, as we stated earlier, are, like, really, really old. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't even know how. We got an apartment. We um, Airbnb an apartment. It was great. If anybody's ever going to Paris, I will uh, hook you up with the Airbnb that we stayed at because it's well worth it. I'm it sorry, was, real quick. It, the, it, like the pictures looked exactly like. You know how usually? Oh yeah, the They're, pictures have deceived like you. No, Blake it was dating. It was great. It was the only <laughs> review I've ever left. Really, I left a review. 
We always do. Like, I was so happy. But we're in the you scratch my back. Okay. Jules. Uh, prices for things like food and grocery store, was it at, I mean, I know there's a. So I thought it was comparable. Okay. Very similar. Um, so thanks a lot, Biden, for ruining France. But also <laughs> then there was, I think, I think the, uh, the conversion rate, I think I was actually paying an extra 10% than I thought. So if something said 20 bucks, it was actually 22 once it gets converted over to dollars. Because even at the restaurant, I didn't know if they would upcharge you knowing that you're not going to have to tip. Well, I mean, it, whatever's on the... I mean, we'd pay... It, it would seem like every entree we ate was like 20 bucks. It's in a big city, though. I mean, that's yeah, New that's York City. Point. You're going to run it in yeah, L.A. True. Yeah. If you're going to visit, Paris is a great... Like, it just feels like they were so... And especially, we're right around the Eiffel Tower. You're... You're going to at least, they're going to speak at least some English, or they're going to just be used to dealing with Americans and can help direct you in a certain way. Um, so the first, oh, okay, and I was going to say, since the buildings are so old, uh, and I got this intel heading in from uh, Hana, that uh, they don't really have elevators. If you book a hotel, they'll have an elevator. But if you book an Airbnb, they won't have an elevator, and you'll probably have to walk up eight flights. <clears throat> uh, this one had an elevator. Ooh. It was extremely small. You could only fit two people in there. Or if you had a big uh, bag like I did, one person and your piece of luggage. And it took forever to get up six floors. Yeah, they're not, it's not your standard hotel elevator. It would take three, two or three minutes just to get to the sixth floor. Kind of scary, too. Like there's a guy down there pulling, <laughs> pulling the <laughs> not thing. Not that far off. And, uh, but... It was very, very cool. It kind of made you feel like, yeah, hey, I'm somewhere cool. And um, and again, so then once I got to nighttime, I kind of went to bed around 11, like I usually do. You I'm made, very stayed up all day. I'm very susceptible, and wife crashed for like an hour and a half. <laughs> It'd be bad. Uh, I'm very, if you remember, I used to like set my clocks at home when I was not early morning guy. I would set my clock like 15 minutes ahead or what. Like, if I see something, like, I believe it. <laughs> so if I used to do the same in my car. Right. Because I'm habitually late. So I used to put it like seven minutes ahead. So when we would go to California, I change all the clocks to Texas time. I want to just see that and know, like, I can't get up at, I can't go to work at 9 a.m., mm. I had to go to work at noon. You know, so uh, but so I think that helped me adjust to this because I was like, well, it's 11. I'm tired. I went to bed. I woke up the next morning like it's seven. So I, I, I don't know. You beat I, the system. I feel like I, I handled the I feel like I did jet lag way better than I thought I would. OK. And then coming back start. and even, felt even back? easier because okay. I, I didn't sleep at all on the way back. And then I was really tired when I got home like it. We got home at midnight. I went to bed about 12.30 and then woke up the next day at like 6, 6.30 because I just, cause that's when I wake up. You beat the system. So I feel, I feel happy about that. Although I did like during the day yesterday, all of a sudden, after our business meeting, like I was really beat. And just kind of. I feel like that every Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. But especially yesterday. So now. to start laundry. I will chronological order this and I'll tell you some more tomorrow. Um, cause I know we have to get out of here by, I don't know, about, about 30 minutes or so. Um, you know what? I'm not going to chronological cause I want to make sure I can use some, uh, some of the video and, and stuff that we have. So let me tell you this. Let's start with the Louvre. That's the first thing we did day one or day two. Yeah, that's, uh, that's the Louvre. Um, that's my older daughter, Ava, who came along with us. I'm so glad she came along with us because it would have been such a weird dynamic with just me and my wife and my one daughter. Yeah, I could see that. And they just were roasting us. They're roasting <laughs> things in Paris. They're roasting the world. It was great walking behind them, just listening to them talk, <laughs> laughing at this and that. But so the Louvre is basically, you're going to the Louvre for two things. First of all, it's gigantic. But you're going for two things. You're going for uh, Venus de Milo, which I think was behind Ava there in that picture. And you're going for the Mona Lisa. 
And then they've got a million other things too. Um, apparently, they France used to pillage. Oh yeah, many other countries and steal their art. <laughs> did you think about? Oh dear, did you think about uh, chaining yourself to anything or throwing some paint at the Mona Lisa? I was thinking it would cool? be very difficult to hit the Mona Lisa with soup because I do have a picture of the Mona Lisa and got to work your way through. You yeah, can't. With, you can't get very close to it. Really, that's as close as you could get. You well, there's a whole. There's a big crowd of people in front of it, but you can't like get right next to it. Man, so you'd have to throw the bowl of soup, and then for the soup to stay in the bowl, like it, yeah, it feels like it would be just very hard for the soup ever to get to the Mona Lisa. So what you're Take saying? Take a bag is, of spaghetti. You're impressed by whoever did that. Yes, yes, you would oh, have whoa. to practice that for God, sure. All these people look so French. Um, one of my notes was that everybody there looks like. Uh, where is that note? Everyone in France looks like uh, what's his name? The uh, NFL reporter, Rapaport. Adam. Oh, Ian Rapaport. Yeah, yeah. I could see that. They all look like him. Um, let me just look at my Louvre notes. So many cool paintings. I wonder how did the Mona Lisa rise above them all? Because a lot of things look really cool. That's valid. Um, I've never understood it. I mean. How does one thing get that famous? Uh, do black people go to the Louvre? I saw more pregnant women than I saw black people at the Louvre. Just an observation I made. Um, the details in, in many of the paintings were very, very cool. Uh, some had, like, babies with horse legs. <laughs> like, people were really into painting. Okay, there's a lot of paint things that people are really into. Painting like humans that somewhat look, they have animal things going on with them too. Like a centaur type situation? Yeah. And they also love painting Jesus. Yeah. My goodness. <laughs> it feels like that was the only thing people would paint uh, for quite some time. Uh, the ancient, Now, which Jesus did they paint? Um, it was very white Jesus. Yeah. Very, very white. Uh, a lot of Greeks, like... It's impossible to go through the whole Louvre in a day, they say. Um, so you have to kind of pick what you want to see. And what I wanted to see was whatever my wife wanted to see, because I didn't care. I was just there. I'm kind of surprised you were there. Was looking at the um, a lot of the pictures of Jesus, just the logic behind hanging someone with three nails off a cross. <laughs> it's going to rip out of your hand, like the, just the weight. Yeah. Now, they did have a couple of more accurate photos from the side. You could see they would build like a little uh, thing where you kind of stand on it, like his, his, his heels are on something, like, or there'd be rope tied around his uh, chest as well. Like that made some sense. But you can't just hang someone off a cross with three nails. You're challenging the narrative of the hanging of Christ on the cross, <laughs> the crucifix. The crucif just saying, let's ask some questions. Let's not just believe everything that, that you see. It would have been... It would have been kind of funny, almost like a Monty Python bit, though, if they hadn't thought about that, and they tried it with just the nails, and he falls out. They must have tried it with somebody. And he's squirting blood everywhere, but he's not dead. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, no. What that we didn't do work. Now? Well, he is still suffering, so that, yeah. I mean, that's what we wanted in the long run. It just doesn't look <laughs> as cool. Um, oh, well, I, I say I didn't see many black people. Uh, the Asian. Oh, yeah. Very well represented. Um, Do you ever happen to observe something I've pointed out before, which I could be totally wrong about this. It's anecdotal, but it's based on about half a dozen experiences. I don't think they wait in line. Hmm. Like pretty much any big city you go to in Europe, wherever, there's going to be a lot of Asian tourists. And uh, I've just no, I've, I've observed that like, hey, I'm, I'm standing here waiting for this elevator. They'll just go. They'll just run right in front of you? Yeah. You know what? Now that you mention it, I did have that happen, and I think the people were Asian when we were trying to get down from the top of the Eiffel Tower. I don't know what it is. But, yeah. Like, hey, I've been standing here. There's a couple posts about You're not it here. seeing me just stand here? Um, uh, let's see. I saw a 1649 painting of it looked like a book burning. Uh, oh, my thought was went through the Egyptian area. And a lot of Greek statues as well. Greeks were in better shape than Egyptians, so they must have done a lot of protein. <laughs> yeah. Um, Jesus popular. 
Oh, I saw uh, someone wearing a Halliburton. Jesus Hallib- popular. A Pacers Halliburton jersey. <laughs> uh, nice. Not a jersey tee. Like the jersey. Yeah. He's been a little down lately. Walking through. We call uh, that a hoopster. The Louvre. Um, and then, let me tell you where we stayed. So we're coming back from the Louvre, and it's great having a daughter who's been there for a month because she can jet around to the the metro, they call it. That's the subway. And, um, you know, I don't know what I'm doing. Uh, but she'll go buy the tickets and then tell us, you know, you go on this one and this one and this one. Um, so we get off the metro, and it turns out our apartment is right across, like the the closest corner to our apartment was the actual spot where Princess Diana died. Wow. The bridge where Princess Diana died. Did your wife have to stand there for a moment and just kind of take a knee? Yeah. <laughs> Let it all wash over her. Well, she has the same memory I have. Yeah. Uh, you know, Ed from the uh, Cincinnati Reds. I do. My old friend. Cincinnati Ed. Uh, his wedding night is when Princess Di died. And his wife was really stoked on that, that everybody, that's all they remember is Princess Di dying. Um, we all learned about that at a bar when Ed was playing pool after his uh, reception. Wasn't there also uh, a second component to that story that there was another married woman there like in her dress right in in the bar in a <laughs> different night. corner there was another woman wearing her wedding dress looking really beaten that her husband was there with his friends <laughs> and now since now princess die is dead right so what are we gonna do because you know how the lady doesn't like to walk in somewhere where somebody's wearing the same thing especially yeah. put that on yeah. steroids <laughs> if it's their wedding um so yeah uh the very bridge and if you're watching us on youtube today which we are on youtube as well so you can see like this is the memorial and people will will get a lock and they will lock it on that chain and they will write their name on there and and like that's just i don't understand why but that's that's the princess die memorial like you you go get a lock you write your name on it or your name you and your wife's name or something and then you hang it on that and that's how you honor princess die Okay. And her dying. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And so when she resurrects and sees your name, she'll save you or something? Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, let me just look at, through my notes chronologically. This is, reason. I heard this a million times. Just the funny. Yeah. This siren. This is all you would hear every day. That doesn't ex- exactly inspire fear. Yeah, oh, it's kind of silly. Oh, you man? Yeah. <laughs> wee wee. Oh, you want through? Why don't you get on a little bike? <laughs> um, I wrote this note. Can your wife read a map? Cause it, so it must be because I have one that can't. <laughs> and would always just walk us the wrong way or, or whatever. That's interesting. So even on like the phone map? On the phone. Can't, okay, can't I was going to say, or anything. maybe it'd be a little bit tough if I had to break out MapQuest. But on the phone, yeah, no, it's pretty straightforward. Kind of gives you directions. I mean, it'll actually verbally tell you <laughs> them if you request it to. How's um, your How's your daughter's French? Um, she's very good at understanding it, not as good yet at speaking one. it. And it's a bad bit when you live in Paris because she does not have to speak French all the time. Oh, it's a good point. When I lived in Mexico, I had to speak. Same. There was I was in, lived a small in Spain, town. yeah, and like the family I lived with didn't speak a lick of English, you know. But people in Paris want to practice their English with someone who speaks English. And there's a lot of tourists there for them to practice with. Yeah, I'm trying to see if there was any other uh, video associated that I, since we are on video today, I wanted to at least let a couple of those. I don't think I have any other videos. I did have another couple pictures. Have you ever heard of? So this is one of the last things we did. You know the catacombs? It's like tombs, right? Underground? Yeah, apparently like millions of bones uh, are under the catacombs. I think our friend TC was stoked on that for a while. And again, when it was, when we were, so you have to walk down whatever, a couple hundred steps uh, just to get down to the bottom. Then you walk, I don't know, it's probably a few blocks, and then you walk up. 
and you went through the catacombs. You see a bunch of skulls. And look at all the bones, how they're yeah. stacked really nicely. So they they give you the big story, but I don't know the whole story. But they found it, you know, back in 1600, 1700. I don't know. It's funny. Um, I can't remember what we were talking about. It might have been a historical site in Israel when I noticed this phenomenon. But what type of person Google reviews the catacombs of Paris? <laughs> <laughs> got a 4.0 so it's not exactly oh, oh it's not the best no. <laughs> it's too dark like what do you, yeah i mean it is pretty dark just getting out of there and being like Fuck you, one star <laughs> for like this thing that is a modern marvel sucks okay on the other side five star well why uh, yeah i don't know i don't <laughs> it doesn't make a lot of sense and do they have like the catacombs pr guy in there doing fake reviews Re like, actually bones are, <laughs> are awesome you you'll be stoked on the bones we're sorry we, you didn't enjoy your experience. <laughs> and I guess you come out of there, everybody will come out with a different deep thought, perhaps. Because my deep thought was, like, my daughter thought, oh, that's really uh, cool because, uh, you know, that that they are preserved forever there and blah, blah, blah. And I thought, well, no, that just proves nothing means anything. Like, you could be a... a uh, and a titan of industry, or you were a you know a beggar in the streets, and you're all it doesn't matter. Your bones are just right there, all next to each other. It's you're just. What does anything mean? I'm not surprised that was your reaction. That was my <laughs> my deep thought is nothing means anything, and you're just going to end up a bone. <laughs> Damn, dude! Wow, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> sorry to do that for you. You're the new. The new studio and everything. Uh, yeah, no, no, no. I the love vibes are, were good. I know, love the new studio. I love everything. Uh, just a couple other quick hits, and then tomorrow, what I'm going to do, I have some really funny audio from my trip to Amsterdam because we took a bike tour, and it's intense, right? I will give you this uh, teaser. You know how? What is your? Uh, I think you should leave skit that you really like. The, the ghost tour? The ghost tour. Oh, so, yeah. Because you've been on a tour where somebody, the tour guide will say stuff. Multiple. In and then there's Boston. always. Boston was the first time I noticed it. But you could see, yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's over laughter, there's fake laughter, <laughs> yeah. and you just don't understand why everyone else is laughing. <laughs> well, if if English is your second language. Oh, shoot. It's very, it's uh, endearing. Like when they're trying to, when they tell bad jokes, I think it's funny. <laughs> like I'm like, I, I'm laughing along and you're going to hear some of that. Okay. So uh, as long as you can make fun of someone for their identity. Well, no, it's just like, hey, they're trying hard. I think since you don't really even know the language, but you pulled off that joke, that's pretty good. I'm, okay. I'm, I'm laughing along with you. But if you know the language <laughs> and you told that joke, oh my God. So you were the only person laughing. <laughs> no, we were all, everybody was laughing. We were roaring. That, that lady was great. And she was the only lady we tipped um, because she kind of asked for it at the end of the thing. Mm. She's like, oh, tips, tips are welcome. I don't know if she sounded like that. We got here. You'll hear her. <laughs> You'll hear her tomorrow. Hey, peeps, <laughs> like which country are you? You'll hear her tomorrow. Okay. They were built between 6050 and 6075. After 75, there were only clock cables. These are all clock cables. Okay, you weren't that far off. Yes, I loved her. <laughs> yeah. Um, she looked pretty good. Uh, for like 60 years old, I did, I do think she looked pretty good, but she was a bit weather worn. I think she's been doing those bike tours for a while. Uh, a couple other, uh, quick hits. Um, ladies be tall in France. So do they have a good Olympic basketball team? Ladies? No idea. Because that's just a feeling I got is I saw a lot of tall ladies. It just seemed like everybody was taller than my wife and way hotter. Um, <laughs> They had a... They're a little bit bigger on average, but not by much. The highway had just... They would just have a gas station at their rest stop. So you didn't have to get off and go navigate your way to the gas station. The gas station was just a quick pull-off gas station, pull back on, which I thought was very efficient. You were driving? No. Okay. Just when just we were in an Uber okay, yeah. going somewhere, uh, probably just to and from the airport, really. Or to and from the 
uh, train station. We took a train to Amsterdam, which was great, which oh, I'll yeah. tell you all about tomorrow. Oh, yeah. And then um, the other thing is they would alert you. Like everybody told you, and put your wallet and your phone in your front pocket. Yeah. Because pickpocket is, like Europe, they said, is well known for pickpockets, and they're very good at it. So people warned you about this? Yeah. Like my daughter said, you got to put your stuff in your front pocket. Wow. Because if you're in the subway system or you're in Amsterdam or wherever you are, the Louvre, you don't, you're, you will get your stuff stolen out of your back pocket. You so I would floss or something and then I would ball that up and put it in my back pocket or I'd blow my nose in a napkin and put it in my back pocket. So. Just in case somebody tried you? Yeah. Then they would get that. <laughs> it's like somebody floss and tissue. <laughs> Have you ever heard of people like uh, pooping in a box and wrapping it up and putting it on their porch if they've had a lot of thefts? Yeah, I've heard of the, stuff like that. The porch yeah. pirates. So that's today's edition of uh, Travel Dan. What video do I have? Oh, uh, okay, yeah, because actually one day... <laughs> Is this the same song you opened with? No. So one day, actually, I was so tired by the middle of the week, I guess. we had Because my wife wanted to go to 17 museums per day. So the second day, I think this is after we went to the Musée d'Orsay, which we'll talk about uh, at length at some point as well. Um, Monet? Overrated? Discuss. We'll get to that tomorrow. <laughs> what a tease. But so this is outside the museum where I just wanted to chill. So they went off to more museums, and I just sat and relaxed because I wanted that to be some of my... Some of my Paris trip, I wanted just to be sitting and looking at Paris. Sure. And it was it's a real a sunny day, and uh, I was trying to soak in some sun and just... Uh, the old man... Okay. I never have tracked this before, but let's take a look. Let me just give you a little uh, example, and then we'll move on to the news. My example here is... All right, let me go back. <laughs> Steps? Two weeks, yeah. So, 1,600. I don't know what a lot is. 3,000. Hold on. 2,700. 1,600. These are the four days before I went to Paris. I was about to say. <laughs> 1,600? So, that's apparently what I get on average if we're doing the show in the den or if we're just living life in, in, uh, in Texas. They tell you to try to get to 10,000 a day. So, let's go to uh, day one in Paris. After having not slept, ninety five hundred. Here we go. Eleven thousand seven hundred. Mm -hmm. Eleven thousand one hundred. Ten thousand. Oh, and sixty nine. Ten sixty. So the point is, <laughs> my legs were singing, baby. I mean, I was so sore, and this is my daughter's life. Yeah. Um, and just up and down. She she lives up six flights. No so elevator. she, no elevator. <laughs> the wood stairs are like worn. Like oh, yeah. it's all, like everything is kind of worn because it's so, so old. It's um, cool. Overall, I'm going to say a uh, big thumbs up though. I'm very glad I went. I you love got the bug? It. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I probably want to do it again at some point, like go somewhere different. Um, it's a big world out there, but it is very, very cool. It's very, if you're going to go anywhere, go somewhere like Paris your first time, because then you, you said, what's it like, you know, imagine being in China where people don't even attempt to try and speak English. Yeah. I always just find myself when I am like, I'm, I'm struck by the thought when I do what you were describing, where you sit on the park bench, Yeah, I'm like, damn, these people are here all the time. <laughs> like I'm here right now, and I don't even think about the fact that there are just there are a lot of people on Earth, and they're yeah. just doing all this stuff. People watching is very right fun. now. They're doing it. Yeah, what are they doing? I don't know. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. It's overwhelming at times. Let's take a look in Paris right now. It's uh, it's eight twenty at night. So really, they're dinner eating, time. Did you dinner? I ate early. Okay, they eat late. They eat late, but so that really worked for me. 
because we could get an early yeah. reservation. But sometimes many restaurants weren't even open until seven. Yeah. And so it's you weird. had it's a weird life. Get your uh, reservation there. All right. Here's More tomorrow. With the dumb zone news. Okay, we're going to go quick here. This is sort of news. This is sort of today in Twitter, but we do have a video I want to play for you guys from Video Man who attended the, uh, along with 80,000 other people, the St. Patrick's Day Parade last uh, Saturday, Greenville Avenue, Hmm. the one that Cuban once saved. And he was in a watering hole at the end of the parade, and something occurred. You want to play the video? And uh, so at the end of the parade, the which apparently exists, local firefighters pipe and drum band marched into the uh, the bar at the end of the parade and i i play this because while i think this is pretty cool is it a funeral no they're doing this for the fallen they're fallen firefighters but right. they, they played quite a bit my my question was for dan of how beaten would you be by this? <laughs> like, I I got the video and was like, that's cool. If I was in the bar at that time, I'd be videoing and being like, this is awesome. This feels like St. Patrick's Day. You no, know, it's not bad. Yeah. I just, I feel like I've heard you. I would like to see that, but that is like the worst instrument in the world besides the sitar, isn't it? It's very unique. It's an annoying to put instrument. put it lightly. I feel like I've heard you take shots at the mariachi band before. No? I don't know. I'm you might a, be confusing me with something. I'm not a huge fan. Like when they just kind of hover. Oh, yeah, when they're at your table or that's something. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, that's no, basically that's what this is. You don't have to pay them, but you know, you're just... But if you're just happening upon this and... Talking with your buddies. And if it is like, St. Patrick's Day, you're like, oh, okay. I get it. Don't make this a regular occurrence, though. <laughs> By the way, St. Patrick's Day. I thought you were going to get up and just walk out. St. Patrick's Day not acknowledged in France. Oh no, no, like hmm. you know how like here you all you know it everywhere. There's going to be something St. Patrick's Day. Yeah, that's interesting. I wonder what co- other countries don't. I saw nothing indicating it was St. Patrick's Day. Nobody I mean, if I wearing, had to start, I would have guessed like Kenya. Like, hey, green beer today or whatever. <laughs> that would have been a, su- a surprise <laughs> to me. Yeah. Uh, let's see. What else do I have for you here? Oh, I did mention earlier the Jerry story. Is that today in Twitter? Yeah. Uh, well, just because I somebody had a bad bit they wanted to tell us about. Okay, keep going. Ted Cruz on Twitter. I think I have him blocked. Well, it says twenty three hours ago, so I'm sure he's got eight thousand things between uh, then and now. Sign up for the Cruise College Championship Pick'em Challenge at tedcruise.org slash hoops for a chance to win a game of pickup basketball with me. <laughs> I thought the bad bit was asking him to or asking you to play in his bracket pool. That's but bad no, enough. It got worse. That's bad enough. Well, you could play a game of pickup basketball against Ted Cruz. Oh my god. So he knows this is going to be a lot of I mean, he obviously knows he has a lot of haters and you just want to be able to get in there and elbow Ted yeah. Cruz. I hope in the like head. Zion Williamson wins. <laughs> and just you know who's going to win? If somebody Ted Cruz knows. Time. Come on. Yeah, I know, but I mean, he did this bit with Kimmel before, right? Where they were talking crap to each other and they played one on one. I just think it'd be really funny they if did? like some five star AAU kid won and just throws down tomahawks on top. He does the full. Yeah, he's got to he's got to take on Anthony Edwards. Okay, I'll play you one more video real quick. This is the uh, this is kind of today in Twitter. It's kind of news. A guy in Houston um, was running from the cops. This occurred a couple days ago, and he ended up at a Whataburger. And he not only ended up at a Whataburger, he ended up on the roof of the Whataburger. This was a today in Twitter news story. If you want to play that one real quick, because it's <laughs> okay. Yeah, so he's shirtless. He jumps off the roof. Off the roof of the water burger onto a the hood of a parked car below, and then has incredible elusiveness. Yeah, kind of cut on a dime. I'm yeah. sure they eventually got him, but uh, they didn't get him there. Yeah, and like Dez was, t- and he he eludes like eight tacklers. Oh yeah, 
Oh yeah. <laughs> Des, I, I think I saw this when Des tweeted about it at first, and he had some sort of comment about like, you know, if you want to see how to return a pu- return a punt to the left side, yeah, with yeah, a certain he protection has, on. He has initial it, quickness, yeah. but I think his long term stamina looks like it's lacking. Yeah, and then a buddy of ours who is a local special teams coach, I saw him weighing in on it as well. <laughs> now, do you know? Do you want to take a guess at the most overworked Twitter joke from this news story? No, go ahead. Can the Cowboys sign him? Of course. Uh, <laughs> you knew that'd be it. <laughs> they should sign someone, you know. Totally. And then the last uh, story I have for you before I got a jet <laughs> is, uh, you know, Biden was here last night. No. Yeah. Not like in the studio. Oh. He was in, <laughs> in Dallas? Yeah. Yeah. He was like, it's so crazy. I thought to the, me how uh, they do the this. Democrats ignore Texas. I mean, you got to get money from everybody. That's all it is. You Hmm. literally fly in for a night, find one of the few billionaire lefties in Dallas, you go to a dinner at their house that people pay $1,000 for, you stay at some super nice hotel, and you leave the next morning with a big bag of cash. Hmm. Like, it feels so transactional to me. It's it's almost like a politics one-night stand. It's like he doesn't care about you because he's there. You'd probably get a stupid picture, maybe. Hey, smell. <laughs> Starts smelling all the ladies' hair in the photos. I'm like, what's wrong? From a different time, man. Did they eat at like 4.30? <laughs> yeah, yeah. They actually um, they actually had a, a Luby's built inside the, ma- gonna... the mansion so they could, they could eat at 4.30. I was going to say the Luan platter. That's right. <laughs> all right, there's your news. The Already? Yeah, we gotta go. You knew, you knew this. Like I know. And subscribe. Want to do three minutes of today in history? Yeah. We could do it. Okay. I just want to give you a couple quick hits. Because we're recording history. this live to tape from New Potential Studio. I like the studio, man. I love it. This is great. It feels really good. I like the chair. I like being able to go back to not having to wear uh, over-the-ear headphones, which I hate. Oh, really? Yeah, I can't. I, it's the only thing I don't like about the den. I like these headphones. I like the mic. I'm looking for something I don't like. Place for Blake to go outside and eat. Yeah, I had a nice little area to eat by myself. No one could see him. Yeah. So it's Thursday, March 21st. On this day in... 2006, the social media website Twitter was established with the sending of the first tweet by co-founder Jack Dorsey wrote, just setting up my Twitter. <laughs> Came out hot. <laughs> this is the day that Sean Payton was suspended. You remember how confused you were with Twitter the first time? I had no idea. 2012. Yeah, I held out for a while, too, which led to the uh, making of Oscar-winning film Home Team. <laughs> Starring game changer Kevin Cha- uh, Kevin James. Where would we be without that movie? <laughs> Fireworks tonight in Argyle. That's right. right. And on this day in 2013, in the Middle East, President Barack Obama insisted peace is possible as he prodded both Israelis and Palestinians to return to long-stalled negotiations. Got it done. So, yeah. How did that work? Is that fine now? That was 2013. That was, <laughs> was 10 I think years by, ago. <laughs> by 15, it was fine. Yeah. Knocked uh, it out of the park. Let's see. I'll give you a couple of Kemp spin birthdays. Adrian Peterson, 39. Oh, yeah. Got a couple. He's got beat his kid. two big ones. And uh, used his charity's money to pay for hookers. Sean McDermott, 50. <laughs> <laughs> Fought like Al-Qaeda. Coordinated. Hey, that speech kind of worked. <laughs> History smiles well upon the uh, Al Qaeda news getting out. Couple birthdays that people are famous because of who they were married to. Kevin Federline is forty six. K Fed, my buddy had a poster. Brad Hall, sixty seven. Don't know it. Married to Julia Louis Dreyfus. Oh. He, he was on SNL. Okay. Um, Rosie O'Donnell is sixty two. <laughs> was she the fat pig? Trump. Yeah. 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 I think I always confuse her with uh, Roseanne. They're both Roseannes. And Ronald... Yeah. <laughs> yep. Ronaldinho is 44. 
uh, famous Dean. because he did a radio show with Donald Dino. <laughs> yes, <laughs> shock jock. And then we have uh, died on this day. We have Pocahontas died on this day in 1617 at the age of 22. Who knew? Whoa. How'd you get that famous? Right. By 22. I'm like 50 and I got nothing. Nothing. You got uh, Chuck 30 Bednarik. more subs. You got 300 <laughs> more subs. And Jerry Krause died on this day. He was a fat pig too, right? Or crumbs. I don't know who that is. Jerry Krause was the GM oh, of the Bulls. Oh, crumbs. Crumbs. They called him crumbs. Oh, I didn't know that. Yes, he was. Or because he, was... he had crumbs on his shirt all the time. <laughs> That's, That's awesome. what Jordan cr- called him. That's a great nickname. So look at how fast that was. Thank you. And Got you out of here in time. There's nothing in worse history. than like being the last parent to pick up the kid. Like they're just giving you like the ultimate stink eye. I love trying to be first, but you can never be first. You can't be first. All right. Well, good closing times. remarks. I uh, love the studio. Yeah, I do too. It's absolutely immaculate. Okay. Adios, mofo.